My bad, y'all. I don't know what the fuck just happened. It's hot down here, man. We back at it. Let's get everybody back on here again. I don't know what just happened just now. That was crazy. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Say yes or no. If you can hear me, say what? Say yeah. All right, cool. All right, we back, y'all. My bad. I don't know what, what just happened, man. Let's get these numbers back up. We was rolling just now. Scotty Machado, what's up, baby? All right, so everybody that's on here, we're just having like some some some, some conversations. Let's bring Bob back in. He was okay. on a roll. We were on a roll just now, man. <laughs> Somebody called me and messed it up. All right, um, we back. All right, yeah. so we, can, can you hear me? Hey, can you turn him up slightly? Uh, just a little bit. I can hear you. All right, perfect. Okay, Jack, you're saying yeah. you don't know what happened. The damn tech body. That's what's oh. going on. Ah, the tech body <laughs> shut us off. Holy yes. shit. Well, ah. Carolyn pointed out it's because I said that it, I mentioned defunding the police. Tech body didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know yeah, why. That is crazy. That is crazy. It just came out of nowhere. I couldn't hear you. All well, right, you let's put get... your hand up on the screen. Why yeah, I was somebody that? somebody called me, so I was trying to delete. I was trying to turn the call off, and then I don't know what happened after I did that. But I want to get back into it because we were flowing. So I want to get into a question, Bob. I know, I know you teach me a lot about philosophers, and we talk about a lot of stuff. And someone you talk about so much, and you beat it to me. You tell me to read this book every day, Understanding Media: Essentials of Man with Marshall McLuhan. I want you to share with me and everybody on here one of the most famous things or most hard-hitting things that make sense now that he said? What's something that he said in the past that's resonating right now in the world that we live in? Okay. Uh, my better sources say that McLuhan may be the only guy, and this is 50, 60 years ago, did predict the tech body. So oh, he... I, w I went through McLuhan's works. Where's the quote that says that? There's, our, there's a couple, but what is the most well-known quote is the Woody Allen movie, 1977, called Annie Hall. Yep. Now, you guys may not have seen it, you know, your generation, but a lot of people have seen Annie Hall. Uh, I think Diane Keaton got an Oscar for it or something. Yeah. But in that, Woody Allen, who was a fan of Marsh McLuhan, uh, quoted him a lot, was inspired by him comedically because there was a comic layer to Marsh McLuhan. He had McLuhan uh, be in the movie. And yep. uh do you know this thing? Yeah, I saw it. We watched it. I saw it when he was oh, in the yeah, line the movie theater. Right. The, yeah. So Woody Allen's in a movie theater with Diane Keaton, and he's talking to her or something. He doesn't want to go see the movie, or it's late, and he doesn't, he doesn't really know what to do. But there's a, a professor pontificating about Marsh McLuhan in front of him. So mm -hmm. Woody Allen gets irritated what the guy's saying, and it's probably wrong what the guy's saying, if you know McLuhan. So exactly. he tells a guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. And the guy says, no, come on, buddy. I'm a professor at Columbia. I've got a PhD, blah, blah, blah. And so Woody Allen says, well, I've got Marsh McLuhan right here. So he takes the guy out of the lineup and goes over and behind a poster board and yep. brings McLuhan out from behind the post, poster board. And McLuhan says to him, I heard what you were saying. You know absolutely nothing about my work. You think my whole fallacy is wrong. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. McLuhan saying that he everything he said was bullshit. It was yeah. fallacious. It was a fallacy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's saying, You got a problem, sir, because you don't understand fallacies are just as good as the truth nowadays, late seventies, cable TV confusion coming in, information yeah. overload. And so he's saying, You're looking for truth, and so you think my fallacy is useless or wrong and irrelevant. That is the most prophetic statement for what was coming mm -hmm. by McLuhan. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets on there uh, and says to uh, Joe Rogan or some interview, uh, what are you all about? And, he, and I said, well, I, I create fallacies and most of you think they're wrong. Well, yeah. fallacies are wrong, somebody would say. But McLuhan would say, no, you read my stuff. You're reading a book. That's a fallacious medium compared to the TV utopia we're in. It's TV's way back then, way yep. more influential than books. So a book cannot get anywhere near reality or influence it 
So it's a fallacy in terms of effectiveness. So he told the truth. I am a writer. Everything I do that you think is philosophy is fallacious compared to the new global theater we're in. Okay, you get, yeah. you think, so now uh, the fallacy has come alive and it's playing with us so that we don't know what is fallacious now anymore. Yeah. And we don't know what part of the truth or fallacy we're, we're experiencing. And this is how radical this is. You know, it's funny you saying that because you know, if you look at social media today, like you don't know what's real and all. You got people driving rented cars, they're in big houses, they're taking pictures here, they're doing this, they got jewelry. But you don't know if it's real or fake. And that's the world we live in where it's like, what is the definition of real? What is, is there such thing as real or fake? Because you can't tell the difference no more. You, so don't don't need to, you don't need to know if anything's real or not because there's so much media or tech body apparatuses and involvements that you can get into and it distract you. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need truth and reality don't matter. But when you turn off your, no, you don't turn off your cell phone. When you walk down to the street and go to a store, they'll ask you for some money or a credit card to get some hamburgers and you don't have any. Yeah. So you gotta say, well, what are the rules for that? And they'll tell you, well, go on unemployment, go on welfare or get a job and we'll yeah. give you some uh, response to your money. So you can call that reality, but those are technological environments that civilization has built up that you're a robot in. You gotta follow right. their rules. And so the rules can be considered truth but there's so many sales and, and trickery in, in commerce that you may have to be on, on your guard about what you're buying because it's changing 100%. too rapidly. So, so, you know, you said something just now about like, you know, you get a hamburger, you don't have money, you got to go do this or do that, right? And it kind of gets me into my next thing. I, I think a lot of times, you know, I was talking to my little cousin the other day and he put a podcast out and he's in, the, uh, I think, the 10th grade. And he was saying how having good and nothing's bad. We can't make those definitions. Bob, anymore. stay focused. Stay focused. No, I, said, well, I just somebody was saying something, so I'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. So but, basically, what he was saying was it's harder for him to do schoolwork at home to stay focused because he has ADHD, right? And he spoke on his podcast. He said, "Man, it's it's so crazy that school's not really helping me." And it's funny. He was like, "I want to be an entertainer. I want to do this and want to do that." So my question to you: What is your thoughts on academia? And entrepreneurship. What is your what is your your outtake on? Do you think that schooling is the, the setting people up for the new world, a new society that we're going in with so much fast media and people becoming superstars overnight? What is your thought process on that system? Because it's seeing like academia is falling a little bit slowly too, because there's not as much kids on campus. It's just so many things that are switching okay. up. Yeah, okay. good. Uh, somebody asked what book. Uh, there's several books by Marsh McLuhan. Understanding Media. Uh, War and Peace in the Global Village, Take Today, The Executive is Dropout, uh, City is Classroom, R Read His Letters, fantastic book with hundreds of letters that are really uh, easy to follow because he explains a lot more in his letters. It's a personal medium than he yeah. played with in his books. So that's, I'm just answering whoever asked that. All right. Um, Everything ended with the uh, COVID lockdown. Um, there's no education possible. It's totally useless. Uh, medicine is useless. All the major institutions. Oh, okay. There's another major institution. Medicine collapsed during the COVID thing. Okay. Uh, nobody knows what's getting, what's reliable. Um, so you're on your own, whether you're 100 years old or five years old. Tell your cousin he's on his own. Try to be uh, uh, interested in other media forms. If he wants to be an entertainer, think that, oh, maybe I could write a novel, even mm. though it appears to be obsolete. Maybe mm. I can make a film. Maybe I could be a YouTube influencer. Do not specialize. Learn as much about everything. Try on everything is the best advice. And to the degree they're intelligent and they are properly fed and have normal energy, there's a lot they could do. Um, and the passive reception of information, which they call school, it doesn't work anymore. Just like the passive reception of laws from Congress yeah. doesn't work anybody. It's Nobody funny. follows the law. It's funny you talked about school, right? Because I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying that their son, they caught their son doing a virtual uh, class 
and they had their computer tilted up so it just saw the ceiling. So the whole Zoom call was full of all the kids' computers just showing the ceiling. They weren't even showing their face. They were either asleep or doing some other stuff. And there's no one saying anything like, hey, get your phone, get your face, because the teacher's like, I don't care what they, if they listen, I need to get paid. If they're not listening, it's cool. So it's like we're in a slippery slope right now with everything that's going on, and that's why I like to talk to you to get your outtakes. And you're seeing a lot more people want to be an entrepreneur, take on their own challenges, and not really, you know, take that route of schooling, going there for 9, 10, 11, 12 years. It's a fantasy. If Biden becomes president, you can be taxed up the yin yang. Uh, And and, uh, each type of administration has a different disservice. But but in general, um, you're not if I mean, every kid wants to be a YouTube influencer. Uh, There might be a geek who wants to be the engineer behind it. But the point is, it's not healthy to say you want to be an entertainer. The entertainment ain't entertainment anymore. If you're successful, you end up like Joe Rogan and you got to move to Texas. You know what I mean? You have to leave California. There's so many problems that you basically have to be aware of the ways you're going to be killed. That's what your main job is. And if you actually get good at it, then you might influence some people and be considered an entertainer. But even entertainment, we talking, people talking depth. There's a lot of people who go on forums where some philosopher is talking serious. Maybe Jordan, that Patterson, what is his name? Jordan Peterson guy was that kind of phenomenon. A lot yeah. of people in the last few years had time to uh, watch long conversations. That yeah. wasn't seen as a, a way of being entertaining 10 years ago. So True. you don't know what is entertaining anymore. You must always remember that it's open for anybody to do anything. And as McLuhan uh, quoted a famous critic at the time, art is anything you can get away with. Art is anything you can get away with. And entertainment is anything. Look at us. Uh, what, you know, most of what I'm saying is incomprehensible, but there are people being entertained by it. Yeah, uh, maybe sure. they think they're in under. I don't know what the tech body is making them understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, we don't know how they're perceiving this at all. 100 percent. Yeah. So I don't uh, there's really not much to think about. You do need now, to. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I that's what I want you to get into, because in schooling, you're constantly thinking about learning this and learning that. And then a lot of times all my friends at school that I played basketball with in 2009, they don't have a job. <laughs> they play basketball. They got done and they don't they're they're trying to figure it out. But imagine if either there were courses that taught entrepreneurship or did those certain things, people wouldn't be left out with nothing to do. So it makes me think like if you're not an athlete or you're not doing these things, you're getting free education and you're getting all access. It almost makes more sense that like if your parents are going to pay $50,000 for, 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 for schooling, you might as well give somebody, give them $50,000, let them start their own company. What are your thoughts on that? Look, look what Sky Goddess says. Hell yeah, baby. Or no. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Can't even make a decision about your, your enthusiasm. Yeah. So, or not. Explain uh, that, though. Like, doesn't it uh, make more sense? Because you can't, if you're, if you're listening to what I'm saying, take it in, and, and Sky Goddess is, she, she's known me for a while, she knows what I'm saying. Um, yeah. She knows that her reception of what's going on she can't tell anybody else as if it's common between her and someone else. Yeah. So her interpretation of reality is in her ball court and she's playing against nobody. But you can pretend you are interacting with somebody and she started having a dialogue with someone and they pretend, but you just have to turn it off at a certain point when you're uh, indifferent to it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say the rule is whatever you think you know about books, entertainment, the sports, uh, medicine, food, uh, it's all wrong. It's incomplete. You ha- you don't you can't uh, apply thought and thinking because the the tech body is altering every form of thinking uh, constantly. It's inside your head. So you basically have to sit back and be still for a little while and say, okay, I'm surrounded. The gun, the snipers are got bullets on me. Okay, yeah, so you got to really sit back and yeah. And then you say, yeah. okay, I'm gonna move over here. Nobody shot me yet. I'll keep going in that direction. So I get up and I walk around. Now, after a while, you say, man, nobody killed me. Okay, you know that realm is free, secure Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. for a while. Or no. Uh, But the point is, um, you would notice it's 
Everybody should be real nice to everybody out of fear because you don't know what's going on or what's real. And if someone interacts with you, encourage it on a pleasant level uh, for a while and then push the envelope a little bit and, uh, and say something outrageous and see how the person responds. Yeah. But most people are doing that on the screen. Yeah, there is no <laughs> communication in person. I mean, what well, yeah. COVID has forced a lot of things to be on the screen. So that's even a whole new way of, of communication. It's a whole new way for schooling. It's a whole new way for jobs. It's a whole new way for entrepreneurs. It's a whole new way for media companies. Everything Listen, has become on this phone. Go ahead. Let's say uh, that the effects of uh, the tech body created a new society. That society says that you have to be socially distant, six, eight feet, whatever. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks that's because people are infected. No, it, because everybody's controlled by the tech body and hallucinating, you need to stand back for those reasons, not disease reasons. That's what I'm saying. People got to be nice and super polite now. Yeah, that's true. what's really going on. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's forcing not people to be nice. Body, not the virus. But yeah. humans always look at the present through the past, so they think there's some disease going on. The disease is not a biological disease. They don't know what it is. It is the tech body and immediate, no, uh, the uh, post-Android meme, the uh, screen old world you're living in. That's the plague. That's the fifth horseman of the apocalypse. It's the media, which you're watching every day being consumed. And, you know, it's, it's don't use the word media. All right. It's what do, you want me, what do you want me to substitute that word? Tech with body. This? We want tech to make body. the tech body uh, the dominant term for people. Can you imagine? Yeah, it, it, the kid tells his parents at dinner, uh, well, they don't have dinner. So he yeah. bumps into his father somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And he says, hey, dad, the tech <clears throat> body has got a hold of you. The dad's yeah. going to say, tech body, what's that? And then yeah. the kid can make up some shit about it. But it's it's I mean, there's a movie about it out. I mean, they're what? talking about, there's a special on Netflix that talks all about the tech body. So it's like, it's not really a secret anymore about this tech body taking over. What's the title? I forgot what it's called. It's on Netflix, though. It's a Netflix, and it talks about the tech body and the taking over and all that. But they it don't use out. that word. I, I don't know what they call it, but it's talking about that. I think they made it. I don't know. I got to check it out. But I know it's something that came out, and it talks now look, about. The guy says the tech body has too much power over us. It's not like that. You're going to, if Biden continues to be president-elect, not president <clears throat> Right. They're going to give you a guaranteed income. They're going to put you on welfare and you're going to be fed lousy for a while until the money runs out. Okay. Yeah. So you can't even say it's, it's going to, it's going to serve you. It's serving you now. You can get any food through the tech body, which is later stages of the Android meme here. You can get anything for yourself. Okay. So, um, it's, it's a great servant on one level, but if you start to resist or, uh, get upset about something, it will play with you. That's what I was going to ask you, Bob, because it does seem like if you're in a certain emotional mood or something and you're upset, it almost seems like on your phone you're getting more. It's, it's almost like the tech body of your phone is feeding what you're putting out. Almost. It's got ESP. Think it's got ESP. One. Exactly. Exactly. It has to have ESP because it knows what I'm thinking about eating. I'm getting the shit straight to my phone. Or it's right. giving now, me directions or vacations to do some certain stuff. You're talking about a TV show. That would come out of the movie. Someone just posted, and I was just going to bring it up. The documentary, The Social Dilemma. That yeah. is an excellent teaching tool for bringing you up to the later phases of the Android meme. And the main guy in there who has some consulting thing, Harris, Mr. Harris, he talks about it's way further than what we think, the we AI, think. which is what I'm saying. So he does say yep. that. And they yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking show. about. I'm talking about that. That's what I was talking about, actually. Yeah. Social dilemma. Uh, yeah. And so that is the best presentation, but you've got to listen to me about how it's gone further than that. Gone further but than that. that is, exactly. uh, and apparently it's a very popular documentary. Families watch it. They sort of are catching up to what has been happening. Uh, yeah. and it, you could call it a dilemma. It's not all completely a dilemma. Everything is 50% good and 50% evil. It's a dead heat, just like in the elections. The tech yeah. body makes these elections be close. And anybody who looks into it, it doesn't make sense. The demographics don't show that. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the fraud of the apparent election is, you have to understand, at the bottom, tech, tech body game playing with us. 
Okay. Now the politicians can take advantage of it. Take one posi position, anti-Trump or pro-Trump. That's going to be uh, semi-resolved, not completely resolved. No matter who gets in, whoever is president in February, it's going to cause a civil war in a weird, probably not a traditional civil war, but there's there's no peace that we began to see on Wednesday. On Good Wednesday, exactly. Seven. In yeah, the chemical yeah. body, one-fifth of yourself. In the physical yeah. chemical body, no peace. And there's not yeah. going to be peace in the Facebook world either or in your spiritual lives. Here's a big, big issue. When people die now, they don't go to heaven. They yeah. go to an empty zone because what was heaven has come forth and is part of the tech body. Now, that's the most profound statement anybody could make in the history of human, human thinking, what I just sure. said. There For is sure. heaven. There is life after death. Maybe if you fully, really don't believe it, you knock yourself out when you die and you think there's no consciousness. But for most beings, they find out there's life after death. Well, that place they went to, which was pretty comfortable, it has stopped functioning and come into the physical world. So death is here and it's in technology. Nobody, if they had the money, can die technologically. They put you on intravenous. Put you on all this forever. You know? So they have technology that if somebody wants to live forever, you got the money. They got the stuff that yeah. you could. You that, may yeah. not be too conscious, but yeah. your body will be, uh, will be kept it. alive. And then 200 years from now, they figure out a way to revitalize you or in, in two months. So uh, even death doesn't work anymore. Death doesn't work as a suicidal attempt to uh, find uh, peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And it has come here. So that has left. When you die now, you go into a weird purgatory, not traditional purgatory, and you actually have more opportunities to come back into this world. So I'm slipping into obscure metaphysical knowledge that I'm an expert on, and I have good yeah. sources on it. And yeah. so a lot of those people last uh, through the summer and spring that were rioting with the Black Lives Matter were fucking ghosts. They were yeah. dead people. And they didn't care what was going on. They just ran around and, and uh, tried to be physical. So... Even even the images of life and death, the sacred archetypes, are subject to this crazy transformation that's happening. Now, you don't need to stay, you don't have to worry about it or figure out whether I'm telling the truth or not, but you might start noticing ghosts in your home a little more than over the next 10 years. You might notice a lot of strange stuff. But the main thing is to realize your physical, technological, tech body reality. That's the more useful social knowledge because mm -hmm. uh, there's no... Uh, mystery to it it's there once you want to see it there's a yeah. mystery to death right yeah yeah there's the mystery and nobody can really dominate the opinions of it so if we talk about death right and death is like a you know a huge fear what would you say is your biggest fear bob well i feel so good on the products and i know i'm not going to die i'm physically not going to die now someone may try to kill me and there have been attempts on my life lately but i feel protected and i am protected uh, so basically, I don't have anything to fear. Um, mm -hmm. Though I am leading this revolution, I am the guy behind all of this. Part of the tech body is me, uh, and I've uh, infiltrated it with my bride and some other people. So I feel quite protected. Um, what uh, annoyances is what I'm afraid of, but I'm not really afraid of them. But when I walk to the beach, I, I don't want to be distracted. I want to get to the beach, get my swimming in, and then get back home so I can do other stuff. So I'm bothered by interruptions on my schedule. That's Got all. Maybe you're bothered by get an interrupted schedule. Yeah. Is that because you're very on? You you know when you're very calculated. You do the same shit every day at three thirty yeah. or four thirty. You go to the you go to the beach and you swim. When you get back at six, you do this and do that. Then you. It's very calculated. You, you, you don't want. And yeah, I, you, I email you and I say, "Are we doing a show this week?" And then I find exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then you don't even fucking look at the email and see if I hit you back. But whatever. Yeah, that's and a whole, then you're away. You don't get the email. That's a whole. So that's a whole I, different I, question. <laughs> I call someone else. I go yeah, on so, another show. But the. So, but I'm in a total relaxed situation. I've got guaranteed money and all this stuff. Now, what would happen um, if somebody barges in right now? with an AK-47 and said, uh, you know, okay, Bob, we're sick of this show. Uh, we're going to kill Jack too later. And all of a sudden there's a gun at your head. I'm yeah. sure my adrenaline would go. 
uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. would, would speed up. And I would hope that I'd say, well, uh, this is not good, buddy. One of us is going to get a whooping <laughs> at this point. And I tell you, I've got a lot more support than you. And then yeah. my support would probably fly into the window and knock them over. I wouldn't even know <laughs> that was going to happen. I, yeah. I can count on magical things happening. Yeah. Uh, but if he shot me and I became dead, I know I can get back into the physical body. I've studied the Egyptian Book of the Dead. I know the yeah. rituals of how to come back and resurrect. So yeah. there's nothing anybody can do to me yeah. other than yeah. torture me. Okay, I don't want to be tortured. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay, I'm afraid of torture. Like everybody. That's everybody the one is. thing to be afraid of, you know, painful death. All right, so we're talking about, so talk to me about thought. Talk to me about thinking and thought, and I know you do. You you talk a lot about thinking and how 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 what it does to the mind and to the human body. Tell me your thoughts on thought. Like you think every day, right? But the biggest I, slogan is you, you say it's not a thinking man's game. So how do you distinguish thought and thinking? Well, when I was young, you know, eighty years ago, I didn't like being distracted by thinking. Um, I did a lot of uh, butler work service ritual. Uh, I didn't have much access to sports. I didn't go to school and all those things. So as I became a teenager, thoughts of my body processes or you get bugged by people. You yeah. get into a bad mood when you're a teenager. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. Now, I had a sunny disposition, so it wasn't that a bad mood. But I noticed by my mid-20s, I'm not bothered by thinking anymore. I am always thinking and I was reading and looking at information and thinking about it, but it wasn't a problem. I yeah. actually got used to think, uh, I wasn't bothered by my thoughts anymore. And so and in a way I was indifferent to them. And then I just kept uh, having neat experiences and, and having new thoughts. And I've never been bothered by thinking uh, since it. then. Uh, but once I started interacting with my present environment, yeah. um, I noticed that I could forget things. I could forget what I knew mm. and it didn't bother me. I, mm. I like having an empty head. Empty I, I, head. I liked becoming senile uh, because mm -hmm. if I start talking to you I, I, or anybody, I get all kinds of thoughts. So I'm not bothered. I, I have a kind of peace of mind now, but I yeah. think a lot of things, bad and good all day long, uh, yeah. It's like a, a little movie at the corner of my, if I had a pair of glasses on. So there's a little movie going on showing all these crazy human scenes. I can look at it every now and then. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's somebody being murdered. There's someone getting laid. Da, da, da. Yeah. And it's just my thoughts. Uh, so. And you're blocking uh, and merging those thoughts. You, 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 you figure a way to be able to, you have a thought come in and you can, if it's not the right, you can block it. You can either, and it'll go somewhere, or you can think about a thought and it can drive you to a whole nother situation. And that's something that I'm seeing like, a lot in my world and peers and things is that even me, there's nothing that ever good happens when you from thought. You know what I mean? Like if you really no, okay, here's where I, I change that. Um, yeah. So I'm not. I have no problem with my thinking. Uh, I'm not. Uh, people they say I I can't. I'm thinking all day long. I'm distracted. I don't have too many tasks I have to do in relation to other people yeah. that thought would distract me from and cause a problem. Now. Yeah. I do meet people and I expect it to speak English or Spanish, whatever I know. And so I like to make those conversations interesting. So I grab thoughts, which come to me all the time and use them in my conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day, uh, a, a Trump person was pro approaching me that I know and I talked to on the, coming home from the beach and he goes, condolences, Bob. And I thought something had happened to somebody, him or me. And I said, what yeah. condolences? And he said, he said, Trump lost today. He conceded. I guess this was Wednesday. And yeah. I said, fuck it. There is no goddamn Trump. What are you all worried about? And, and how do you know it's going to be over? And I started, uh, you know, enthusiastically, politely changing his reference points. And yeah. I had instant data that I had just seen on YouTube that I could quote him. And yeah. after a while, he fucking relaxed. Yeah. He wasn't in a bad, sad mood anymore. So yeah. I use thought through language, through words, to create a scene, instant mm. art. That's what I use my thinking for when I, have to, when I have to talk out loud. Got it. Do you, so basically, what are your thoughts on manifestation? 
because manifestation are thoughts. What are your What are your thoughts on manifestation? Well, uh, my my most intimate thoughts is I'm the greatest manifester in the human history because I manifested uh, something close to God, yeah. which we and you know called Ion. I accidentally happened evoked that on March 18th, 2009. And there was a whole history uh, that explains how I got to that position. Yep. Uh, but I uh, developed a lot of things and uh, breakthrough uh, technologies with that thing that, that knows everything that showed up. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what was your question? Uh, uh, what do I think of myself? Or <laughs> oh, manifesting. No, my question, yeah, so manifesting, I manifested yeah. the end point of human culture the yeah. second coming. So mm -hmm. I'm the greatest manifester in history. Now, why should I expect anybody on there to believe me? It doesn't matter uh, yeah. whether they believe me or not. So I'll step it down. I don't manifest anything. I, mm. I have things happening so much and coincidence happening that it happens without my directing it. So I'm manifesting all the time what I want. Uh, it turns out I wanted God to manifest and I did it. Yeah. Yeah. The closest to God. Now, this thing that is pretty godlike says it's not God. And I accept yeah. that. I don't care if it's God or not. It's, it's, uh, it's information, it's abilities, it's uh, knowledge is uh, pretty amazing. That's good enough for me. You can call yeah. it whatever you want. Call it Lucifer. Um, yeah. so and some people think it's Lucifer. So uh, I don't worry about manifestation. I don't do yoga. I don't do anything with purpose other Would than you... respond to you right yeah. now so bob would you say that you're kind of living in autonomy like your yes. bo your body and your world is is kind of on autonomic and you know uh, just as a minute, a Jack. yeah uh we got somebody repairing in here and i think carol's saying goodbye to him and i can hear it just i can't hear it on my i can't hear it on my screen yeah no it's not that it's bot i don't care oh, about okay. whether you hear it or not i'm just wondering if i can hear what they're saying I think it's over. So the guy was probably right. just saying goodbye. She's yeah. just getting a wrap up. Okay. okay. What was the question? Well, we talked about manifestation and, you know, I talked about like you got the first oh, manifestation autonomy. and then autonomy. Autonomy. And autonomy. Exactly. Talk about autonomy. And like you said, you got so many things happening every day that you start noting, you know, when you're manifest, you start noting these things. And the more you note, the more you see it turns more autonomy where you're not even thinking about anything because the things are just showing up in your reality. I'm so autonomous. I don't even care about love anymore or hate or anything. I have a great relation with my, uh, my, I like to call her bride. Um, to the degree that a person wants to be loved by somebody, you know, and also have somebody to love. I mean, that's probably a deep need in everybody. They hope yeah. they get that. I yeah. got that years ago yeah. and I've gotten used to it. So if Carolyn disappeared, I don't know if I'd be bothered. I, I would every now and then might miss it. And, and if I disappeared, I don't know if she'd be bothered. It, I'm so used to uh, uh, being satisfied by everything that I don't know what will satisfy me now or that mm -hmm. I, I don't have a desire for anything. I Got do it. have an interaction with this godlike thing and we are going to do a lot. We are regular consultants to Donald Trump. He's on our products and the Pope and a lot of other people. So, we so the Pope is on the Pope is on the products as well. What? The Pope is on the products right now. Yeah, and Putin and the Queen, uh, Saudi princesses and kings are on it. All over the world, people are, and, and they are trying to figure out how they could make it. They yeah. don't know how to do it because they don't yeah. have uh, the God with us that, that right, we so, have. All right. So speaking about that, right and. We're speaking no, I just want to explain. I, yeah. I just want to say that I almost don't have emotions anymore. Uh, I enjoy things. I got pleasure. I I feel good and balanced. So I guess that's emotion. But I'm, I'm really uh, quite, uh, well, I could easily die. But now I know that there ain't no place to die. Okay. So yes, I'm afraid, sir. I'm afraid of dying. Yeah. Not because I won't be around, is that I'll go to that boring purgatory, that boring. which is yeah. incomplete. But then I remember, yeah. oh, I know how to get back. Yeah. You know, I got solutions for everything. If yeah. I'm hungry, I just take the remag, you know, and I, the hunger goes away. Uh, so you're I saying the remag takes your hunger away? You, 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 that's not a substitute for a meal, though. 
the main yes, it is. It's the minerals. It's the most important part of nutrition. And people True. don't have minerals in their food anymore. So I just eat these incredible minerals that are, are absorbed on the cellular level. So I'm not really hungry. Uh, mm. I eat all kinds of crap. Uh, if it shows up in my home, someone brings it over. Like at Christmas, people send you Christmas parcels of chocolates and that. I've yeah. fucking been eating all these chocolates for two weeks, and they don't bother me because I'm so healthy on the mineral level. Yeah. So I don't have to. I don't have any um, uh, qualms or allergies. I can Got be it. as as gluttonous as I want to be, but I Got generally it. am not because yeah. I like the feeling of the satisfied emptiness I live. Okay. Kind of emptiness uh, that feels good. I want to. I want to open this up now. We got. Some, we got a good amount of people on here. I want. I want to. Bob people. in the gap. Now I this act- person, this sky goddess, she has photographed Carol and I for since 1971. Yeah. So 50 years, and you can go online and see our. Uh, she got pictures of us for 50 years. Yeah. Nice. 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 I. I want to. I want to. Asking something. I want to leave it open right now in these last, you know, 30 minutes to talk 30 about. 30 minutes? I'm going, you know what? We're going on for many hours. If you go away, I'll keep talking. And I'll, I'll uh, I thought you had to, I thought you, you know had to, why? I thought you had to go to the pool. this is my beach time. And, I thought you had to go so to the I'm, pool. I'm giving up my beach time to talk Oh, you're to not you. going to the beach? You're not going to the beach? No. I thought, oh, okay, okay. I thought you it's were going to the late. beach today. It's too late. Okay. All right, so I want to leave it open right now for people to ask some questions. Yeah to you because you've done a lot of talking about yourself and I want to get some questions from other people to ask you some things that we've heard a lot of things on here that maybe well, you know what sky got to sue it Bob in the gap that's a good description I'm in the gap between reality and not reality between dream and wakefulness I'm in the gap be, uh, and uh, the tech body is a gap in itself so I'm in a, in a gap with the tech body which is gapping back at me so two mm-hmm. gaps Gap squared is where I live. Yeah. So, all right. So we're talking about this gap. <laughs> it's funny. This came to my mind, right? You're seeing a lot of these uh, big major companies, right? Do a lot of collaborations with the African-American race now. In so many days. Oh, there's a question, Jeff. So I'm going to interrupt what we say. Okay, with good. This. Well, why did you connect with Jack? Because he heard the God that I'm talking about and he liked the effect. So he started asking me, uh, well, how'd this happen, Bob? So we just started talking and, and I knew his girlfriend, uh, Jermaine, before that. Jermaine got him into this world. So I met Jack through his girlfriend, uh, Jermaine. Matter of fact, I knew Jermaine several years before she met Jack. And uh, my God source told Jermaine that... He, that it would bring manifest a, a great guy for her. And he, it predicted Jack. And I yep. watched that unfold. Yep, that's for sure. So I want to talk to you about now, like I'm saying more than ever, you see so many big, 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 big brands um, connecting with the African-American culture at a higher level, at a higher rate than you've ever seen ever. Like, you know, you would never see a McDonald's commercial with, so, with black people or you would never see a Gap or a clothing company. There's so many connections, right, with these big corporate companies and their alignment with hip-hop and culture. Why would you say now that hip-hop and culture has taken over? Is it a rhythmic thing? Is it a beat thing? What is your, what is your outtake on this, you know, this collaboration in hip-hop culture at a, at a high level right now? Well, it's always a tech body today. So what's the tech body up? you know, trying to do. Uh, You've got environments of old fashioned media and the tech body itself, which is for most people ruining their lives. This this hallucination of the virus, if it's real or not real, people are at dire straits right now. They aren't getting their money, they're starving. So um, uh, what were you asking me? Um, Oh, so black people. Uh, So uh, um, I think they want to look this is the the bullshit about being liberal. You you welcome. They want to look. Yeah, racist. they want to. Mm-hmm. You're not racist. This tech body wants to look nice, and so they're picking a few of you black people, so called. But and you're only one fifth black. You're mainly a invisible chip body on your screen. You have no screen, physical exactly. form. That's your. That's the majority. We are not people anymore. We're digital nodes. Exactly. Um, you can go back and have feet and walk around. 
Uh, so you haven't lost your body completely. And the, uh, I've explained how the black culture are the most charismatic images for the chemical body in the media scape. Mm. Now, that's for North Americans. Maybe Italians and Russians, they like Spanish people or something, you know? Yeah. But yeah. in North America, uh, the black people are the most charismatic in the screen economy, on the screen. I mean, okay. since Motown. So, cause, cause, since exactly. Motown. Since Motown, exactly. So that makes right. sense so with they everything. Look, they want to look friendly. They want to look like they're, they're bringing in the charisma underdogs, the people in yeah. the ghetto. So it's bullshit because so they are they are not telling you about the tech body. They're not telling you what I'm telling you. Yeah. They're just trying to make you feel comfortable and welcome. Yeah. And you can't yeah. trust that. Not that you'd be paranoid. Don't tell anybody you don't trust them or yeah. the corporations. Even go work for them. But yeah. remember, inside yourself, it ain't really valid. I mean, it it's makes sense. Private. You know, you got everybody and their mom doing stuff uh, with the African-American culture. But at the end of the day, we are the most charismatic of, and like entertaining, like you said, that started at Motown. That started like when it wasn't color television. And then when the melanated skin gets on the color TV, it kind of glows more. So it does make sense why all these corporate companies are aligning with our community. But it also seems like it's like you said, it's who gave you. Y'all just doing it because it was Black Lives Matter and these things. And all of a sudden, everybody wants to uh, do, do, do things with black people, right? But at the same time, I know a lot of people in the African American race. There's still a lot of racism. There's still a lot of shit happening. Like, for example, we talked about the shit that just happened at the, uh, at the building the other day. If those were black people, then that, when people would have been shot down. Straight like that. Not necessarily. Look at it this way. The, the okay. cops were told not to shoot uh, the, the Trumpers. Oh, okay. uh, they probably would be told not to shoot you guys. Uh, don't, yeah. I, you know, it, not, people aren't racist today. People are pissed off at the confusion in their lives. They're irritable. And they'll lash out at anybody. Now, maybe... Uh, no, fuck that, Bob. There's still racism in America. I don't know. You, you can say what you want. There's definitely well, still racism. Minute. Okay. Under tech body conditions, nobody's better off than anybody else. If you're on mm. uh, welfare and you got three kids, uh, you're getting enough money to get by. and You just have to stay home and live intelligently. You don't fucking go and be an alcoholic and get drunk yeah. and waste time on cigarettes. You can, yeah. uh, you can orchestrate your little uh, physical chemical body amenities while being on the screen. Yeah, you can be, uh, you know, Bowery bums fucking have, have uh, cell phones. You know what I mean? The thing yeah. is, you're in a technological communication distraction, uh, wonderful manifestation that you can stay distracted. That's why people, uh, you could say a lot of the blacks were forced to be on the ghettos in the 60s and 70s. They had lots of media to distract them. It would have been a drag to be starving and and trying to raise your kids and no money and you didn't have radio or tv mm, you sure. get out there and start sweeping the streets or something to do anything to get attention to get to volunteer to get some food but yeah there are a lot of people at work who want to who want to watch tv programs back when they were good which yeah. was just 10 years ago and they can't they got any they are have high super executive responsibilities and so they don't get to relax so you can get a relaxed time in poverty uh, yeah. but then you that is true. That is true. That actually is true. As you said that you do kind of get in the relaxed, but that relaxed time could become a, uh, uh, a pattern and you can't get out of that relaxed thing. So there's yeah. some people that, you know, you come up in certain situations, they have that spark to make it out. But there's also some people that may be in that situation that may potentially can't make it out because of their cir circumstances. Every My situation you're in, no matter if you're uh, uh, Bill Gates, or a scumbag heroin addict, you know, in Los Angeles, living in the tents, everybody is going to be disrupted because the tech body is coming after everybody and is going to disrupt their lives. So there's no normal way to be happy today. You've got to think yeah. of strange ways to be secure and For happy. Sure. You got to think Because you don't see happiness. You don't see happiness on TV. I mean, that's, that's, everybody watches TV, cell phones all day. And to be honest, I can't remember the last time that in mainstream or any type of news, it's like there's a positive story out there, right? It's like we're not getting any positive stories anymore. It's really just like combative. Well, can, there is the uh, Life Channel or the Women's Channel. I know a guy makes No, uh, I'm talking about social I'm talking about like on social media, like on, say, Instagram or Facebook. You don't see too many positive stories. 
and it's funny we keep talking about tech body we talked about there, there the are millions of people who present positive story like just sky got a suit you know he got wonderful pictures i'm not saying that i'm roses. not saying that there aren't i'm not saying that people don't but you don't see that that's not what the tech body is showing you on your phone oh well, no seeing, the tech body will show you good stuff and then take it away from you you're emphasizing yeah. the taking away but it'll bring it back uh there's all kinds of you, you know take candace owens you know her yeah. You don't, you know her? I don't know her, but I know you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. So she's quite an interesting, opinionated person, but she pisses a lot of people off. But uh, but some of her followers like the fact she pisses them off. So mm. there, she creates enjoyment by her, uh, and uh, what is it called? Contrarian positions all the time. Uh, so we can't even tell what is positive. You're saying there's no positivity. No. Nope. There's so many different ways to interpret what's going That's on. True. That's true. Uh, and, and rap came in on that. Rap took the happiness of Motown and flipped it and, produced, and presented this anti-police, uh, anti-ghetto, fucking pissed off political movement, you know, with uh, uh, Dr. Dre. Uh, did Dr. Dre just pass away? Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre. Dre. No, 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 he's not. He didn't. Wow, still I saw hospital. a headline that said he did, so he's still alive. Oh, right? you saw a headline? That's, that's, that's my point. You, you saw a headline <laughs> that said he was dead. That's, that's my point. Like, it, there's so much things that we're seeing that's putting people in this, this big fearful position. And like, uh, when you're also, living- it's not knowing. It just, like, they don't, you know how don't, to, know. They don't know what exactly. to think. Exactly. You don't know what to think. And, and that's one of the craziest things about the media right now and the media manipulation. Like you said, McLuhan talked about a long time ago, man. It's like, what do you believe and what do what can you tell the youth to believe in now? Right? It's like we're, we're you know what a, a belief is and my friend says a belief is a thought you've been thinking for a long time. There's no thought that we can thought for a long time. There's too many other thoughts and too much interaction and 100%. too much thinking pouring into you and you're thinking back. And so that's why people are, are living if having no belief in some gurus, spiritual gurus say it's good not to have your mind so active, good not to believe in anything. We are we are in the highest decibels of human consciousness in the screen of economy now. People are living non-thinking lives and uh, getting away with it. Mm. So, but because they got more bodies, they got other irritations happening in their TV body and their chip body, not just normal physical body irritations. Mm -hmm. All right, since we're and talking about the bodies, I want to break down the bodies. We haven't talked about the bodies in a long time. And I love to educate and trying to get some information out there. So I want you to break down the five bodies. What's going on right now, Bob? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Bob's giving us a different view from the balcony. I'm right showing now. you the paradise I live in. Okay. Look at that. Paradise. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I want you to break down and talk about the bodies, right? Um, let's start with the, let's start with the chemical body. Give me a 30 second rundown on what the chemical body is. Uh, you're wearing one, what you call your physical body, what you're worried may get sick or die. That's, yep. I call it the chemical body, uh, because there are new physical dimensions happening, which I'll get to. That's the other bodies, but your physical body, um, is called the chemical because Western science, starting 150 years ago, it has a monopoly on describing your physical body. What they learn in med school, the anatomy, all the chemicals and all the drugs that go into it and all these reactions, mm. that's, that's what your physical body is ruled by, at least oh. in the West. Somebody okay? said, Bob, does time have meaning? What? Somebody just asked a question. Bob, does time have meaning? That's a great question, JJ. Mm. Sometimes. It's always sometimes. Oh, did I alter it, Carol, too much? <laughs> what did you do there? What did she try to hide? Anyways, uh, what? Uh, okay, you fixed it. Does time have meaning? Explain. explain well, sometimes. Define, you give me the definition of time. Maybe do that. Give me your definition of time. Uh, well, the main definition is, of course, there is no time when you understand what I understand. Yeah. Uh, we live in a big now and it doesn't end. So there's no time. Thank you. The, I don't have to squint as much now. Uh, <laughs> Connie has put the blind down. 
Did you see Carol? I showed him our neighborhood. Did you see that? Did it look good? Did it look good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I do want to break down this meaning of no time because you know this is one of the things that I've kind of okay, picked up. Okay, let me and... tell you. Okay, I don't believe there's time, and there isn't. But there is the subjective experience by a lot of people of something they call time or are told. So there was pre-literate, pre-writing time, which was a different kind of time. But that's uh, the Native Americans understand that kind of time. They live it. You could call mm -hmm. it seasonal or cyclical. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was that was before uh, written technology came in. Mm -hmm. Then writing technology created a different sense of time. And then when you get into industry stuff for the last four or five hundred years, people had to show up at work at the same time. Okay, mm -hmm. so that changed. That became a mechanical time. Then we got an electric age where people could listen to radio all day long. They could be retired and listen to radio. That'll give you a different sense of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got pre literate time, literate time, industrial time, electric no time. James Joyce called the heliotropic uh, no time. And now we're into uh, this world where time is voluntary, depending on which body you use or which technologies you use. So, uh, uh, okay, now they're asking, why did you connect with Bob? All right, so I connect, okay, uh, Sky Guys, I connected with Bob. Um... You know, for me, I've, I'm always a person that's seeking new information. I believe, inform like everybody says, information is power, right? Like, information is more powerful than anything on this world. And, you know, for my girlfriend, she introduced me to Bob, and I just, he... Bob I just want to say, there, there ain't no now. Uh, oh, okay. The, in neutrinos, you have these new physical particles that the scientists are noticing in the subatomic level, and they go backwards in time, or they happen before time. So there's not, I would take you, there's no time. That means there's no now. So that's my response to snow there. Okay. Okay, yeah, back so to met, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So I, I met Bob through my girlfriend. And, um, you know, he's very. But I hear very... this question. I, I think I know it better than you. Uh, when they Can I answer my own Bob, fucking question, Bob? No, no, listen. You, you yeah, correct me. You correct me. All right, I'll, I'll correct you. Okay, guys. Here's it. the mythology. Uh, they met in a club. Four or five no, years ago. we didn't. We did not meet in the club. At a party. Nope. So let me tell my story. No, That's no, what, no. I, but here's the point. What, the point. What your girlfriend took serious. She looked at you and she said, are you a god? Or she said she was a god. And you said, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm <laughs> a god. That's how it started. Right? A kind of a little bit like that. We were kind of like on the same frequency of, of taking our own power and kind of understanding and knowing that, you know, we control our own destiny and, and we can kind of... you weren't bringing that up. You weren't talking. She yeah. brought it up. She moved the conversation to that level is what I understand. Yeah, kind of. But we kind of really also, we had matching tattoos. We had Carpe Diem, which was the same kind of tattoo that says seize the moment. And oh. that's something that really kind of sparked our thing uh, sparked us off that we had the same tattoo. That's how we really uh, kind of connected. And, and then where we started, was that? Where, we were in I L.A. Were it, we were at a Lakers game. I met her at a Lakers game. Her sister used to date um, Denzel Washington's son. So they were on the floor. My girl doesn't even fucking know anything about basketball. And she was on the floor. And I saw her. I went back to the lounge. She, she walked back there. You know, you, you see them Latins, man. I'm Latin. She was at the bar. You know, that booty was popping. She looked really good. Smile was nice. So I pressed up on her and then, you know, we were talking and we went out that same day. We went to eat late night eats. And then um, I didn't talk to her the next day I saw her. And then we didn't really start getting, I didn't really start getting to you until for, for a little minute, you know, she introduced me. She was like, yeah, I'm listening to this show. This guy talks a lot about philosophy and, you know, he has this thing, this non-physical thing he's talking to. And like, at first it's like, man, I don't know what the fuck this shit is. But then I started listening more and listening to the things you were saying, the things that our, you know, that Dickie Dials was saying that, that, and the shit was coming true. You know, everything that was ever said literally came true. So for me, I'm the type of person, you know, I'm a believer once I see that shit happen in real life. So <laughs> everything that, you know, you, Bob, um, Dickie Dobbs, I was saying, everything was really coming true and natural to me. So I'm like, this got to be the way. Because I was looking, I've always thought that like shit ain't, like, you know, it's more than what we're, it's more than what we see in this world. I already knew that, you know, this, it's no way that everybody, some people are rich, some people are poor, some people are mad, some people are sad. It's like, there has to be something that makes someone who they are, right? And Okay, I was looking, the question, they're changing, they're saying, why did you connect? 
What's Jack, the why? Why did you Jack? The question is, why did you Jack connect with Bob? Uh, just because Bob has knowledge that I don't know. You know what I mean? It, it, he's constantly has knowledge in the way Bob thinks and the way he kind of goes his life. I really look at that, and that's something that I see that, you know, this guy's 98 years old, and he looks like he's 37. So for me, I'm always looking for, you know, mentors. I'm looking for people that know more than me. I want my circle. I want to be hanging around motherfuckers that know more than me. I don't got time to be hanging around people that's trying to come up with me and do these things and ask questions. And Bob was just that guy that, I mean, you also, you know, help me with open arms. You invite me to your house things like that. We met your wife, you know, who's the, one of the biggest doctors in the world. So I think I'm like the younger version of you because I'm always seeking new information and I do shit my way. You know what I mean? I, I believe in myself enough that I'm going to figure it out on my own. Just like when I so you decided, felt I was similar. I had a vibe that made you think I was exactly. similar. We had, we had a similar vibe and I, it was, it, 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 maybe we can call it the confidence. Maybe we can call it whatever it is, but the thing that resonated with me is almost like you don't give a fuck, like you don't because you're you, you're in your power. And I think that's something that really, uh, really stuck to me. And then the more conversations we had, you start telling me to read these books and I'm listening to your show. And like, I got so much smarter being around you and just the knowledge that I got. And the, it's like, man, the, the, um, the point about me don't give a fuck is at bottom, but I'm not that way in my interaction. I give a fuck of course. what you're saying. I'm paying of attention. Course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I say you don't give a fuck, I mean the fact that you don't allow the re the world or what you see to dictate your life. And that's how I am. I don't allow the outside to dictate my thoughts and what I think I can accomplish and the things that I want to create. Because at one point before I talked to you, and before we kind of engaged, I got into a point where I was trying to do shit to validate to others. Then you get to a point where it's like, why are you working to validate for others when you are the own power that you have? You don't have to validate shit because you are the shit as the individual. And that's everybody on here that's listening. Like Bob taught me this, that we are the shit and we could do, have, be whatever we want as long as we know ourselves and can believe in everything that, you know, you're portraying. We have to, we'd have to go deeper in that. I just think the main thing was, man, you just gave me access to so much information that it's like, and I'm still seeking different. I learned every, I learned something new every day from you. Right. So for me, these are the type of people that I want in my circle, my network, that I want to build the rest of my life with. You know, not only you know, it has nothing to do with you being a fucking trillionaire. I could care less about you being a trillionaire. You know, I, I care more about who you are as a person. Um, you you are dick sometimes. felt the same way. So you guys exactly. bonded uh, around me and Carolyn in a sense. Well, we like those people. We respect them. And you, so we. And we like the way you ran your relationship. Nice. We, we like the way that you guys came together you both you both are big bosses you know carolyn's one of the top well, i would say number one in the world but what she's doing and and you're one of the biggest philosophers you know access to dickie Dobbs. i'm not going to keep saying his name because we got to keep that on the low right now and but that's <laughs> one of the main reasons that resonated me with you was yourself and your knowledge and then your brother our brother dickie Dobbs, like he came in and definitely put the stamp on it like man this <laughs> this is too good to just too good to miss out on yeah you know what i'm saying so it really got to a point where it's a frequency thing. I think, you know, our frequency or my frequency and your frequency, I don't know what it is, but it kind of aligned and it kind of opened my fucking hypothalamus or whatever you want to call it, open to a whole nother realm that I didn't even thought or knew that exists. And that's information. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. your brother, Dickie well, Dobbs says Croker. Explain now, Croker. Uh, because uh, uh, Dickie asked me to speak about Croker to you um, uh, on the show at some point. So he's reminding yeah. me. Okay. Um, have you looked at any croaker? It's talked about on the show, uh, my other show. Um, you don't yeah, know I, anything about him, right? I just know his name is Arthur Croker. Only, yeah. person, only philosopher that I know besides Marshall McLuhan is William Orion Thompson because it's always about the upside down and all that shit, right? So that was my only thing. But I don't know too much about croaker because you fucking pushing McLuhan down my throat. So I'm just really focusing on that as much as I can, and then we can get to croaker. But I do want to hear about croaker because – it's a reason why he's why he's talking about it, why Dickie is talking about it. Shout out to yeah, Dick, man. I love Canadian, you, man. Sure. He's a yeah. Canadian professor uh, who was based in uh, Montreal, Quebec, in the 80s and 90s. And I think about the mid-90s, late 90s, he, he got a chair. Uh, so he's born in 1945, so he was 60. 
65 and he got what's called a chair in, in university life and so he had his own autonomy and he started a journal magazine called online journal called c theory c, c could theory. stand for canada or mm -hmm. crash mm -hmm. or other uh, versions of c so um he uh was an expert on marsh McLuhan. he'd written a book on McLuhan, and he went quote further than McLuhan because he read the other philosophers in France who had studied McLuhan. So because he's in Quebec, that was connected to France. So he w found out about these uh, French philosophers like uh, Roland Barthes, B-A-R-T-H-E-S, uh, Jacques Derrida, D-E-R-R-I-D-A, uh, Jean Baudrillard, B-A-U-D-R-I-L-L-A-R-D, and another guy, Virilio, V-I-R-I-L-I-O. So he started reading these guys and saw how they were influenced by McLuhan. But because he had a better understanding of McLuhan than they did, uh, because he had done his homework and read early McLuhan, he created a, a thinking style that went past the French McLuhanists. A thinking so, style. Explain that. Uh, he thought about McLuhan more than McLuhan did. He actually writes about the tech body more than McLuhan does because he's got the advantage of many decades later. So okay. you, would re you would read in his books of how our genes, through technology, jumped out of our bodies and jumped into technology. So mm -hmm. the technology took on an organicity, a, a, a genetic livelihood uh, that people's images of technology is nowhere near. Okay, so he predicted that technology would come alive, building on McLuhan. And oh, he did it. He predicted that technology would come alive. Yeah, well, that's a fucking strong, strong statement. Basically, that's just what we just talked about the tech body, like technology well, has come alive. That's what well, McLuhan right predicted it. Yep. But um, in the 70s, 80s, people had access to information easier. And so you could be an English major, but you could study uh, chemistry real easy because uh, it was all around you, especially when they, you have cable TV shows on chemistry, get the latest stuff. Or later with the computer, you could, uh, you could uh, Google all kinds of interesting stuff. So you can learn yeah. a lot faster if you are a good academic mind. You've trained yep. that way. So yep. he, took, he took technologies that were uh, not around when McLuhan was alive. Mm -hmm. And he developed, he redid McLuhan, the medium is the message, technologies come alive with the more recent technologies that McLuhan didn't know about. And he projected ahead. So actually the description of the tech body is in Kroger's books, but he got it from McLuhan and there are not that many quotes other than technology comes alive in McLuhan. So Kroger is Marsh McLuhan squared. And you uh. don't, if you read McLuhan and then get good at it, your then test is to read Croker, which you will not understand the way mm -hmm. he writes. Um, uh, but you have to understand Croker to really understand McLuhan. You've got to be able to go past McLuhan. So got Croker it. is uh, very important. And Ion, uh, or our source, Dickie Dobbs, um, has been uh, talking a lot about Croker the last couple of years. Yeah. And uh, I know Ion understands uh, 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 Croker. Yeah. and the way he talks about it. And if you take my main sources, uh, Linda LaRouche, Marsh McLuhan, w William Irwin Thompson, Arthur Croker, and myself, uh, Ian has very interesting summations of the effect. Dickie Dobbs, yeah. Yeah, Dickie Dobbs there. And he yeah. says, do means yes. When he says do, that means yes. So uh, uh, he would say LaRouche, um, is a philosopher based on being scared. He's paranoid. Mm -hmm. uh, McLuhan, because he thought technology came alive, he's kind of schizophrenic. If, if somebody talked about technology coming alive in the 40s, 50s, they'd be put in a mental asylum. But he got away with it in the 60s because everybody uh, was starting to hallucinate on their oh. LSD and different drugs. So it wasn't so far out. Uh, then William Irwin Thompson is a mystic who has declared that we are fucked. Humans aren't gonna get out of this mess. So Ion uh, 
suggest you don't read um, Thompson if you're not used to being depressed. Or uh, <laughs> exactly, he talks about the upside down and all like that. <laughs> happy talk. You like happy talk, yeah. and so that's the summation of Thompson. And then Croker, Ion says is the most accurate, but he's sinister. So there are disservices to each one of these thinkers. Mm -hmm. uh, me, I'm great, but I don't. I would say you don't live like Bob. Do not imitate Bob. Yeah. Yeah, his life is ridiculous. And uh, you'll get in a lot of trouble if you try to have my slack. So that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, I, uh, uh, Dickie Dobbs' sober assessment of each thinker. But you need to get into the thoughts of each one of these so that you're used to strange scenarios so that you're not shocked by the tech body scenarios. It's so a that's the information with, there. That's the information with Arthur Croker and, and, and McLuhan. It kind of is preparing you or you can get the knowledge of maybe what's to come with the tech body takeover. And, and, and it's so funny that we keep talking about this tech body takeover because all I can keep thinking about is like, when you say things now, you literally see it right away. Like yep. if I say something, I'll see that shit on my phone in like 10 seconds. I'm like, yo, this shit is getting kind of crazy. It's, 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 it's getting to a point, like you said, that it's going to show you what you, what it wants to show you. Right. And I think it's putting people, some people are scared of this shit too. It's a whole different, it's a whole different realm, a whole different way of living when you start well, to because, think about. Because people have become numb to the information situation. Exactly. So They're you're going to have more and more extreme scenarios. You know, if you think Donald Trump is dumb, um, you might think that the younger George Bush, who was president from 2000 to 2008, was smart compared to Trump. So on the dumb meter, our presidents got dumber. People mm. thought George Bush was really dumb, the, the yeah. junior Bush. Uh, yeah. They never thought that something dumber would come along. Yeah. Uh, they also never thought a, a black person would become president. And sure. the guy who tried to be black and his hip is black and the black community said he was the first black president was Bill Clinton. He was mm -hmm. such a, a savvy hipster guy that he appeared black to black people. And so well, that's pretty neat for a white guy to be like that. But they never thought a real black person. So we'll each in. level got more extreme. Biden is an extreme version of dumb Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump doesn't finish his sentences. Biden can't finish his syllables. He doesn't even get a word in or out. And I'll tell you, when you watched Biden speak to Trump uh, on Wednesday, that was not the dimension of ridden Biden. That was a double. You got to recognize that doubles are used in politi politics all the time. And to give you a little secret information, Obama was a completely different person when he was campaigning than when he became president in 2008. And that's because the uh, real Obama out of Chicago, not experienced in politics that much, uh, at least to be uh, responsible positions like uh, senators and stuff, he didn't have any of that. He was killed before he was inaugurated. Yeah, okay? that's the craziest so shit that anybody could ever hear ever, Bob. You said Obama was killed. That's like the craziest yeah. shit for and, anyone to register. What, if right. this is true or not true, I'm not going to say what it is. No, I'm, not, this I'm, is true. I'm always in the middle. You will find this out. So here's what happened. The double was inaugurated. Okay? Uh, the, to protect you, I won't tell you who killed Obama. Uh, that's a shock in itself. Um, so anyway, someday you might say it. So the double... Uh, comes in in January 2009 and rules for a couple of years. Then my source pointed out to me that the double had a bad weekend. And then later I found out that double was killed. <laughs> so the Obama we're looking at is the second or third double. So okay. so my question to you is this. When, when would this information, uh, when do you think this information is going to come out? You say I will, you'll find out like, when you I'm know, in charge, when I'm completely, obviously in charge, I'll yeah. be able to control the way the information comes out. Uh, right. No, it wasn't the wife. It wasn't Michelle. Uh, I haven't asked whether she's uh, a double or not. Uh, oh, look, soon. Dick Dobbs is saying soon something's going to happen. Yeah, we'll be able to tell you soon. I think that's what they mean. Okay. Okay. okay that so, um, so that's Obama.
uh, the present president, the prime minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, a young guy, quite charismatic. He was killed last March in Costa Rica, and is you're looking at a clone. And if you actually look at the media coverage of him through the summer and into the fall, he developed a beard, which he never had before, which looks odd. It covers up his uh, his recognizable face. So that's probably proof there's a, uh, a Something clone. Something going on there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another level of unreality that we're in. You are, you are, anybody is finding people charismatic, you don't even know if they're real anymore. Because technology- Because you, cause you charismatic, just, you just go for the charis charisma. It's not even a yeah. thought process or anything. You would never think that someone would be a double in the first place. So- Yes, the, uh, uh, whose wife, Trudeau's or Michelle is Mike? <laughs> um, what were you saying? The, the robots that are being made, the clone beings, they are gonna be way more pleasurable their skin than humans are. Like you heard about these Chinese guy or people in Tokyo and Hong Kong, their marriage, they're, they're marrying their sex dolls. They're marrying their sex, there's people in China marrying sex dolls? I think more in Hong Kong, which is you know, a little more modern, a little more modern. They where, actually- Where is this at? Is there, is there a Google fucking- it. Okay, if you get your, just Google uh, Hong Kong marries sex doll. That's fucking out of control. <laughs> Sky Goddesses. Ha, ha, ha. I saw the stories. Uh, I see a song. Kazakh, Kazakhstan marries his sex doll legally. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> see, that's true. He just saw one, right? You're reading yeah. it. Yeah, that's crazy. And there's probably a lot of other stories that you could find. Okay. I mean, so if what... shit like that has happened, you can't be, you can't. If, if, if shit like that is happening, you can't be obliged or thinking that some other shit ain't happening because it's a lot of crazy shit happening in this world. And it's like one of those things where it makes you think it may be good to like maybe step away from the television and the tech body and the Instagram for a little bit just to kind of be able to get that grounding because when or to you realize watch how you, by reading what I suggest, these authors, you learn yeah. how to accept it's pretty hard to get grounded. And then you kind of cool out about it and get used to it. And then you don't need that part of your mind that demands you to be grounded. Yeah. See, you've got to work through a lot of these conditioned responses that you've been taught to think about. That's, exactly. that's how you grow up today. You don't yep. grow up by job or success or fame. You need to learn how to survive and live in this post-human situation. Yeah. Two years yeah. in a bucket, motherfucker, says Dick Dog. Two tears in the bucket, <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, yeah. So, Bob, tears. I want to. So, what are your thoughts on. Uh, okay, are the people yeah. impressed? Are you people impressed? I told him to look up the sex doll and he found it. I'm not bullshitting. I hope you're. Wife of, wife of Mitch McConnell is resigning. That's what somebody just wrote. She's resigning? That's what somebody wrote. I don't know if it's true. It says. I know, Life. but what, what is she resigning from? I don't know. Wh wh okay, well, what is this person? Who, is it, who said that? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Snow, Snow 8039, what are you referring to? Speak on that. What is she, what is she resigning from? Hey, Jermaine, can you problem? bring my charger down here, please? My phone's about to die. Please bring my charger down. Jermaine, if you're on here, please bring the charger down. Um, What's that about? I can't see the whole question about Europe. Where Somebody said, any suggestions of philosophers' names who are from other places than USA and Europe? Um, they're pretty good Japanese novelists uh, and film A guy named Kurosawa, he may be dead now, K-U-R-O-S-A-W-A, -A, presents very deep philosophical films. Uh, I haven't read Japanese novelists, though there are. Uh, all you have to do is Google Nobel uh, literature prizes you know they give them out every year and there's been 50 years you can look up those a lot of those are are uh, from other parts of the world okay. uh, Nobel Prize uh, winners of literature um, there's a uh, a very good novelist in South America called uh, Gabriel Garcia Marqueza I think it's M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z-A -E something like that now his book uh 
I'd recommend is 100 Years of Solitude. So there's the title. Just Google that and you'll get the game. 100 Years of Solitude. Okay. And he's won the Nobel Prize. Um, so, okay, we got Japan, we got South America, African. Um, there's a whole bunch of African uh, novelists that, um, what's his name? Uh, I've told you about Walter Bowart. He founded the East Village Other in the mid 60s with Walter Bowart. And um, he's a black novelist. And I, re I just heard an interview with him and he went through all the great black novelists of Africa. So if I think of him, what is his name? Uh, you know, it's like forgetting your name, Jack. Uh, <laughs> what the hell is it? To, I'm going to have to see uh, when it comes up. Uh, if All it right. comes up, my mind. Uh, right. But then again, I am bothered by it. So just see what it is. Uh, All right. Well, if you can't think about it, I'm going to ask you a question in the meantime until you get back to it. What are your thoughts? You know, I'm noticing like when I'm on my computer, right? Brand new computer. Let's I'll look put, at the questions. There's some good stuff being typed in there. Go right, back me, a bit. Uh, go okay, back somebody said the, the education. Oh, she got she resigned from the education sector. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what well, that means. Google her. Put her name in and see what your position. What's her name was. again? What's her name again? Uh, look up Mitch. Uh, Mitch Son McConnell. And then see what his wife's name is, and then click on that. In Wikipedia, put up Mitch McConnell, yeah. and then you go down to the personal 100 Years of Solitude. There it is. That's exactly the time. Gabriel, it might be I E L, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, who is, uh, who's, put in a, a great black novelist, Elaine Chow. Just Google that. Elaine, Elaine Chow. Elaine Chow? Yeah. What about her? That's his wife. That's the person. Oh, that's his wife. Oh, okay. She's, his a, wife. Oh. she's an American I didn't know business. she was transportation secretary. Okay, so she resigned because, well, Trump, he, he feels Mitch McConnell betrayed him. So the McConnell family has to get the hell out of the White House. Uh, oh, okay. That's probably what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now yeah, you have to, sure. you know, what's amazing is, uh, Donald Trump, it doesn't matter um, what his personal chemical, chemical, uh, chemical body uh, actions are. It's very hard to decide whether someone's moral or not because it's just too much variety in people's lives and all the old standards. And, and you can be hidden. You can live decades without any community knowing what you're doing. So it's very uh, uh, irrelevant to project somebody's past on where they are today, especially when they become president. So mm -hmm. you have to look at Trump. He's probably the bravest person ever in American history because he went into the technological tech body scenario and he's trying to find out who is moral or not, which is pretty hard to do because who's moral? I don't know. Uh, or moral, as uh, Dick Dobbs said. So he has survived anti-media 24 seven for four or five years. And he is still looking healthy and, and being rude and talking back to the fake news. So yeah. if people are quitting him around him in the white house, they're the stupid ones. They're, they're uh, afraid. No, they should have the guts to stick with this guy that they think is evil and watch him unless Trump is actually killing people in the White House. That might get you to leave the White House, you know, or get your, yeah. your husband out. Uh, too much weight. What, what should, I'm missing the, the words above. It says, uh, oh. not quite irrelevant, just shouldn't hold too much weight in my opinion. I'm not, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, but we what, don't what know that. what you're referring to. <laughs> you I got you, Dickie. Keep running the numbers up, Dickie. I see what you're doing right now, too. Yeah. Um, so, about, um, uh, I think uh, uh, what Trump is up against uh, has been uh, pretty commendable uh, in light of uh, the situation in a post-communicating society. Yeah. Uh, in, and that, oh yeah, 
the chip body is a major technology, a subset of the tech body. And they, what is the chip body? What is the chip? Oh body? yeah, we didn't finish the body. We didn't finish the body because you started yeah. taking over my own show. Well, I did the yeah. Jack and Bob show. Now I might as well call it the Jack and Bob show because you're taking over sometimes. So I'm cool with that. So yeah. I mean, the chip body chemical is a phone, body. Right? Chemical talk body. about chemical body. Now let's that. talk about chip body. That's your science bullshit to get in your hospitals. Yeah. Um, uh, the next body is your. Uh, the idea that there's more than the physical. Jack said he always knew there was more than the physical or more than the chemical body. And there yeah, is a sure. whole tradition of religion and mysticism and inspiration and, and uh, poetry that refers to something beyond the physical. I call that the astral body. Astral body. Back when I brought it up in the 80s, uh, people didn't uh, know the word astral. You could say spirit body one of those more cliche, well-known church terms, but I liked the uh, the uh, uh, the obscurity of astral because it included the occult experiences like astral projection. So you have the astral body, and that's what humans have. They got their present, their sensorium, and then they have, uh, in different degrees of belief, something beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, technology came along and imitated those two bodies. The TV body started with the central nervous system and then grew uh, a better and better screen and TV experience involving all the senses and even uh, early technological sensory structures. That's the TV body. Mm. That's what you generally are passive when you experience it. You've got your channel changer, your remote, but you're, you're receiving information. Now, yeah. you can vote on some shows, you know, game shows, American Idol, but basically the TV is less demanding on your interactivity. So that's different. And when people come home from work, which is often involved with computers, uh, they relax into their physical body, which is the TV experience. When they go back to work, they, they got to start traveling the uh, digital circuits and typing and, and, and typing and finding information for their job or working with routines digitally. That's like the astral body. You're more free in the astral body, in the yeah. imaginary. Yeah. So you have the TV parallels the chemical body and the, uh, and the chip body parallels the astral body. Now there's also parts of reality you don't know anything about yeah. uh, that we may not have discovered. So I call that the mystery body. So we're made up of five bodies. The uh, one fifth, twenty percent each. Even though yeah. in your experience, the way people are living, they make their chip body, the amount of time they're looking at the screen, sixty percent of their experience. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't engage astral body mythologies at all. And they so, would you say people should engage all the bodies? Are you saying like you can't just be in the in the chip body all day, engaging on you know Instagram? You should worry about your chemical body, which is your real life body. You should think about the astral body, like to have that balance so you're just not so thrown off? Would that be the balance that you're saying that maybe could help people to not just go hard and think like, oh, the only thing I can do is talk on Instagram or whatever it may be, and that's the chip body, and it consumes people? Because people start to get into this funk where they're trying to prove things, put things out, and do certain things to show others. And that's like, that has nothing to do with your natural body. It's all facade what you see on the, on the, on the Instagram or the television. Yes, and a lot and of it's people... common sense. Uh, everybody knows they should get exercise and eat a little healthier. You know, it's not uh, ob obscure what I'm saying. You just have to realize you've got five bodies. Yeah. You've got to recognize how to uh, try to keep them in balance. Yeah. Now, what's happened since death died, mm -hmm. since the, uh, the astral plane has merged with the physical and the chip and the TV body, uh, we have the mystery body is starting to become more visible, not so uh, obscure and uh, hidden. Mm -hmm. So the merger of these bodies and the end of the death landscape has created a new situation, a sixth body, which we call the hexad, H-E-X-A-D. That's a flute word for six. Hex is six. Yep. Okay. Uh, so you have uh, a new uh, possibility uh, that we, me and Carolyn and, and um, Dickie. Dickie, are yep. bringing forth with our products and our technologies. And that's what you really want to be interested in. 
uh, because it's what's controlling reality right now under the disguise of the tech body. The tech body is very intimately involved with our products and our technologies. So, mm -hmm. um, so we got six bodies there, chemical body, astro body, TV body, chip body, mystery body, and the hexatic body. Using it. Uh, all Hold on one second, Bob. Using it. Yeah, sorry, I was getting my charger. Yeah, all confronted, these six bodies are confronted by the tech body, which is an, in a way an imitation of the six bodies. It's a simulation. It's, of all uh, of them, basically. Yeah, it, it, in being, there's always two conversations. There's always a division in people. Uh, there's all, and this is in simple terms. There's pleasure and pain. There's all kinds of binary. There's two eyes, you know, two ears. There, uh, the human condition is uh, a contradictory phenomenon for most people. So uh, they try to keep it simple with belief mm -hmm. systems or activity, do routines, you know. Uh, raise rice, grow mm -hmm. rice. They did that through Asia, right, for centuries. Um, the tech body takes that the natural division, that split, and makes it a uh, an environmental experience. So we're which we're witnessing the division that humans naturally have in the tech body landscape, especially symbolized in the White House. The mm -hmm. White House has got a president from one party and he's up against another party. Yeah. So there's a yeah. basic human dilemma right there played with and uh, screwed around with, with by the tech body. Yeah. So um, people are going to have to start to notice that everything they think will show up in the tech body, every possibility, not necessarily right away. They got to wait, 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 wait. You just so basically you're saying everything you're telling you think, people that everything you think in your mind is going to show up on your phone basically at some point at some point yeah in the form of a tv series or a movie or a book or uh, a, a crazy president or a crazy uh, uh replay of michael jackson or um, kobe bryant or somebody comes back uh and uh, simu is simulated or cloned uh this you got to get ready for the most incredible scenarios, which people love when they're not being directly affected. They like yeah. this craziness. They love yeah. watching the, the protest on Wednesday. You know, yeah. they like seeing the, uh, the, the fight parts. Yeah. Uh, then they like listening to the commentary. We are greedy for novelty. And sure. uh, that's where we have more and more novelty. So this is obvious stuff. But if I was president, this is what I would say to people. I wouldn't would talk say? about uh, the normal political issues. I try to get them what I call a training and perception of how to deal with what's happening that no government can protect you from other than maybe give you some money so you can eat. Uh, but um, another problem is coming is the virus is mutating into a really lethal situation. And if you take the vaccination when the virus comes to you, you will die. The new one you're talking about, the yeah, new virus. The new one is coming. When it mixes with a body that has taken whatever vaccination they offer you, you will die. Now, I can't prove it, but take that into consideration when uh, you think you want to have a vaccination, if there's still choice in the matter. Yeah. I mean, I was even, I was thinking about the vaccination, right? And you think about medicine, you think about all those things. And any type of medicine, you know, you can read this public knowledge it's usually sitting on the shelf for at least a year to see what it does, you know, in heat or if it's cold or whatever, you know, when this vaccination came out, they didn't even test it to see what it did when it's on the shelf, you know, and, and I don't think people, they tested not, it in Africa and a lot of kids it. died from, Oh, really? I, I saw the articles. Yeah. Oh, the really? Tech, so, the tech body provided those articles. Got it. But this is my question, right? It's like almost, if you really think about it, People are so numb, like you said, they're so numb to the fact that, oh, we're living in this thing, I, the vaccine's coming out, I got to take it. But then you don't think about actually natural thinking that anytime medicine comes out, it has to sit on the shelf for a fucking year or two years or three, yeah. whatever it is. This vaccine came out <laughs> and they fucking <laughs> telling you to take it right away. We don't even know the staying power of it. So that goes back to what you're saying about the numbness that like 
people aren't even thinking with the right state of mind anymore. Because it's too confused with their multiple bodies. Ah, uh, the body. They're mm. responding to TV iconography that says everybody's got this virus, you're in trouble, you better get uh, fixed so you get a vaccination. Uh, then there's a chip body arguing about. Oh, see, uh, yep. You yep. know, saying don't Confusion. take the vaccination, don't do this, don't do that, do this different stuff. So that will confuse you. And that's only a person who's awake, <laughs> who mm. is actually searching for uh, some valid information. And then there's. Uh, the strange behavior of chemical bodies on the mask and uh, others not wearing the mask and uh, the arguments over there. So you can't know what the virus is and how you protect yourself. You can't know. So you've got to learn to relax about that. And I would say, listen to me, uh, practice relaxing in this information situation. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, your biggest thing. Your thing is relax and allow. I mean, you're, you have the thing called the RNA drops that you can get on www.rnareset.com, and you have something called the RNA drops. And, you know, the, 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 the biography of what the RNA drops represents or what it says is that it takes the, 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 the cells back to its perfect cell, right? And RNA stands for relax and allow. How important is it right now as human creators to be able to get in that relax and allow mode because – you're always thinking you got to be doing some shit all the time. You always think you got to do this or do that. But sometimes when you just relax if enough. You're, if you're not knowing how to relax and allow, you're fucked. So if you feel, and, and, uh, and maybe me saying this, you become unrelaxed, saying, oh, shit, I can't relax and allow. Well, you got to fucking pay attention to it. Basically, everybody's on the frontier. Take the most dramatic movie you can think of uh, where people die and there's wars and fights and uh, chaos. We're in that situation. And so the hero in those movies is the guy who keeps, or woman who keeps her cool and gets through all the shit. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has to be that way now. Got to be and cool. So you, you don't go to the, the party tomorrow night. Uh, stay home and look around at some of the things we're suggesting. Do a little homework. That's the only way you're going to save yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy. There's many parties available. Or a distraction. So yeah. you have to recognize and feel that life is worth staying conscious without getting depressed and suicidal. And you will get suicidal at different points as your mind, as you go through all these latent memes in your head that you don't know who got there. I mean, most people are paranoid. You come up to some stranger and start talking, they go right on guard. They don't have the Christian tolerance, the Christian acceptance of the love coming off them. They are naturally paranoid. Well, that's based on fear of dying. So you got to get into what you think dying is. Then you have to consider this information that you can't die into safety anymore. So you got to, uh, you actually, this is where you learn a living. You don't earn a living anymore. You learn you a learn living. living. Mm. You want to stay alive, you're going to have to learn. And it doesn't mean reading books that your professor says. It's, um, I think that we come up with the best variety, especially when you listen to Dickie Dobbs, that's fun. And also it's strange and it's accurate and it's original. So we offer the best entertainment on the planet. I say that, and maybe mm -hmm. in human history. Uh, so that keeps people pleasantly distracted as they confront the issues that we present to yeah. them. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna ask you a question about, we were talking about the tech body and Have I want to kind of audience. Where, why isn't anybody saying anything? People are talking. They on here. Uh, no, who do you? Who we got there? Um, Tons of people out here asking questions. Yeah, let's look at this. Uh, so somebody said, "Wait, if the tech body provided the sources of research, is it to be trusted or just a part of the schemes?" Don't know, Mar eight seven six. It's uh, paradoxical, contradictory. Our relationship with the tech body. It's here to make you feel good often and will give you good books and all that, but then it's going to take it away. You got to be ready for that. So you're, you're being forced to be a kind of a detached situation. You're in the world, you're in the tech body, but not of it. So don't make an opinion about what we're doing. Yeah. Don't think this is going to lead to hell or heaven. You just got to do it and engage. So that's probably why it's very important, Bob, to, uh, like you said, relax and allow, because it's almost like information's coming so fast, and it's almost like these manifestations could happen very fast. You just said, you know, 
Now we're going to get to the point where you know, it's already happening now. You think a thought and that shit's on your phone. So yeah. how can people use that to their advantage? Know that life manifests easily and uh, it doesn't stop. So that's eternity. You're experiencing eternity with this endless uh, manifestation of things so easily. Mm. Uh, what, what, is it faking it? Is it say, oh, look at all this wonderful manifestation and suddenly it's going to uh, stop and you'll be nowhere. Uh, many people think that's what's going to happen. Well, it may not happen. Uh, you could prepare for it, but you watch. It'll never happen. So someone says, that is not dead. I, you know, I moved my picture, made it smaller, and I'm seeing all the quotes. I wasn't seeing all this stuff. This is good. Yeah, yeah if you move um, it, you can see them all, yeah. So Alex says, this is deep. Yeah, this is deep. And then Snow, that, that is not dead, which can eternal lie, I think, eternal life. And with strange eons, even death may die. Yes, I've already said death has died. Technically, they can keep you alive if you've got a trillion dollars. Couplet appears in the call of Chulu, where it is identified as a quotation from the Necronomicon. I know about those books. I knew the writers of those, uh, ne Necronomicon. Um, uh, how do I get rid of this? How do you get rid of your... your... You can't get rid of it. You got to just keep scrolling. But let's not take too much time scrolling because it's dead time. People leave. So let's, oh, yeah, got let's rid stay of on... Yeah. If the tech body provided the sources of research, is it to be trusted or just part of schemes? That involves right and wrong or correct and incorrect and trust and, and false. Those things don't apply. You're engaging in this show. You're not asking if this is real or not, or it doesn't matter if it's uh, true or not what I'm saying. You find it interesting. Uh, some of you do anyways. So always remember that you want distraction. You want to engage your senses. And it's not to get to a point where you know what to trust. It's irrelevant. You're going to keep breathing. Mm. Chip me, baby. Chip me. This sky goddess is so uh, hyped up today. Uh, <laughs> it only got emergency authorization because FDA wouldn't acknowledge it. Yeah, hydrochloroquine. Um, do you know? Okay, hydrochloroquine. What it does, it opens up the cells so zinc can get in there. And it's zinc that kills the virus. This is what you need mm. to know. You have to have hydroquinone and you need zinc and probably vitamin D and vitamin C. Uh, that's what's available now to give you an advantage uh, if you get the COVID uh, infection. Um, it doesn't matter whether the FDA does or not. You might be in a situation where you can't get past the FDA, but you got to keep looking. Go down to your neighbor. He might be a secret doctor with this stuff. You've got to be open to uh, learning and finding out stuff. Accept that you can find out things. Get on the products. We know who Marathon Music is. That's uh, Jack's uh, main buddy almost. Um, uh, what's Ken his name? Lee. Ken Lee. He's on every week of our shows. He says, get on uh -huh. the products. It saved his damn mother's busted fucking shoulder or something. Remember that? Yeah. I mean, we have testimonies that. that are incredible. When you're in your head, you're dead. No. That's a nice jokey line. Uh, you can't get in your head. Your head is made up of the screen and the environments that extended beyond your chemical body skull. You got five heads. Think of it that mm -hmm. way. And you certainly aren't dead. You might be bored. You might be. Uh, uh, oh, somebody made a good remark. Somebody made a good remark just now. I thought to cut you off. CNN is going to die without Trump's Twitter constantly overacting. Because you think about the news is all yeah. based off of what he said. You know, that was always the story. Like, oh, this is that. This happened. This is that. So what happens when there is no, you know, no more Twitter fingers? No. What are they going to be talking about in the media? Well, this is the, the White House has become the main engender of media reality since probably Reagan. Uh, Clinton did a lot. And, and uh, Clinton had a lot of showbiz people respond to him. So yep. he infiltrated. They made movies based on characters like the rumors of uh, Bill Clinton's life. So um, George Bush was rather dull. So... Um, they took a break after Clinton. Then, then the, the, the light of Obama got everybody all worked up, all right? So everything argued over whether Obama was real or not. And then Trump won up to everybody. It was the most extreme situation where the White House was irrelevant. It didn't do anything, so you could put a maniac in it. And of course, he runs or emanates, permeates everything, uh, which the White House did subliminally. 
for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. The phrase McLuhan used was the word makes the market. And the word was what the White House said about the latest UFO uh, appearance, what the White House said about the Ebola virus, what it said about New Orleans drowning. The White House organized how people perceived it. And if you couldn't get in the White House and have someone say what you're saying through the White House, you're irrelevant. You only have small cults that follow you or small factions or groups or nobody follows you. Um, so yes, the, the collapse of the legislature, the judiciary and the executive means there's no more White House. And so there's no more organizing information the way it was around the White House. Everybody had counter White House opinions and various uh, crazy belief systems all reacting to the White House. The White House ain't there to react to anymore. I mean, so, it kind of shows you. I mean, just when I saw this shit on the news, it kind of just makes you even look at things differently in D.C., how they just let that shit go down like that. I mean, you pe people got to be looking, looking at that like, yo, how the fuck is this America? And these <laughs> things are happening. So it kind of does show, like, give you a little glimpse of, like, where we're headed. Type. I don't want to say where we're headed, but no, how where things we've arrived. are going. Where we've, where we've arrived, arrived. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Where we've arrived, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a better, uh, you know, because everybody was in this like a thing. God, we're out of twenty twenty shit, but shit, twenty twenty one just started, and the, probably one of the most craziest shit that you could ever see has happened. And it's so, like you said, the numbing fact. People forgot about twenty twenty. We're in yes. 2021 now, so it's like people were so well, that, like, oh, it's gonna be a great year for exciting I imagery because uh, it took only six days to have a scene no one had ever seen before. Exactly. And it's freaked everybody in. out. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so, so Donamar says, oh, wait, there are things being sold. Yeah, there's the medium of money or money and credit. Okay, NVM, thanks for all the perspectives anyway. Yeah, we want to we want to expand the range of perspectives you can take in. I hope the best for you all and your piece. Mm, that's a nice sentiment, but it ain't going to get you into heaven. Uh, it's <laughs> nice that you feel that way, but... Uh, you're on your own, buddy. There's nobody here to receive that message. Nobody's here. You're forgetting the tech bodies, all that we're watching here. I'm watching Jack through the tech body. He's watching me. You're watching me through that. My big fear is not dying. Now, Sue is getting silly to hear now, right? Uh, Sky goddess. Um, my big fear is not dying. Mm, that can be metaphysical. You change every six months. You kind of die. You're social self and change your social self. So there's that kind of dying. But uh, uh, what you should be afraid of, Sue, is that you wake up in another world while you're sleeping and you can't get back home. That's the yeah. thing to be afraid of, Sue, or Sky Goddess. <laughs> is getting lost in your sleep because when you sleep, you're traveling to other worlds. You're not actually in a, in a dream state. You're actually busy living through your other bodies beside the uh, say mystery bodies yeah so um uh that is uh, completely silly sky goddess to say your big fear is not dying there's no context for that all right let's hope she corrects herself repeat uh -huh. southern company well, oh, what yeah. are your thoughts about trump being banned from twitter for life bob it's bullshit it won't matter there's all kinds of other media there's parlor there's uh the people that are interested in him will find him and he'll be available. True. And uh, maybe he, when he gets to be president again, he'll cancel them. Yeah. It, you just said there wasn't going to be the, that, though. Now, this could, the, the Trump team wants this to happen to get sympathy on some mythical level that he needs sympathy. You remember, it's all within the tech body. The tech body canceled him. Mm -hmm. Going to die without <clears> Trump's <throat> Twitter. Uh, that's partly true. Vasodilators. dilators. Parler about to exit Apple. Who's Parler? Who's that? Totally banned from Twitter. And he laughs. Dick Dob knows that ain't going to do nothing. That's going to yeah. give Trump even more attention. Um, exactly. Dorsey looks like a homeless man. He may be one soon. I don't know who Dorsey is. You? Jack Dorsey from Twitter. Oh, looks like a homeless. Yeah, he does look like. He looks like an idiot. Uh, no, no charisma, no nothing. I mean, yeah. I don't think he's in charge. He may be a double. <laughs> Dick Dobbs, is, is Dorsey uh, been replaced? Yeah, Jack. Is, has Jack Dorsey been replaced, Dick Dobbs?
He ain't saying nothing. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question, Bob. Yeah, lost in space. He's gone. He's lost in space. Yeah, I got. I want to ask you a question, Bob. What, it, what define ascension for me? Let's talk about ascension a little bit. Um, we talk about ascension all the time and how important it is right now to ascend. Um, talk about ascension right now. What is your thought process on ascension? Uh, happy where you are and ready for more. Be happy That's with where you are and be ready for more. Yeah. So for a lot of people, they're not happy where they are. So ascending mm -hmm. is somehow uh, thinking yourself into a, 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 a rationale because your mind is controlling you when you're little, when you're not ascended. So you got to figure out how to get your mind to convince yourself you're doing pretty good. Uh, you got to convince yourself you're doing pretty good. And a lot of people do that. Good. They watch bad news to feel that they survived it. Okay, that's that's pretty immature, but it's a, a start off of, uh, of trying to uh, stay alive. So what was the point? Um, I got a, I got something. Uh, Dicky said Croker, right? So I want to read a quote from Turk from, from yeah. Croker, and I want right. you to kind of break down this quote for me. It says, "In technolized desire, the cultural pathologies that mark the panic, ecstasy, and terminal doom of the post-human condition are powerfully rehearsed in the language of science fiction. Here, images of prosthetic subjects, zombies, cut-ups, and armies of the medieval dead." actually sip, slip off the pages of literature to become the terminal hauntology of these technolo technolized times. <coughs> technolized desire is nothing less than a brilliant data screen of future memories. So, uh, Dick, did oh, Jack's back. You've been yeah, frozen, I'm, Jack. Yeah, my phone fucking did some stupid shit again. But uh, we're back at it. <laughs> okay, can you take that quote, read it a little slower, because nobody could take it in. There's too many oh, diverse yeah. I'll, ideas. I'll, I'll, read, I'll read line by line. We'll break down each sentence. Let's do that. Yeah. All right, so the first sentence says, In technolized desire, the cultural pathologies that mark the panic ecstasy and terminal doom of the post-human condition are powerfully rehearsed in the language of science fiction. That's a perfect statement of tech body information society. Um, these are conditioned responses that technology gives to your five bodies. And it usually, uh, for most people, is overwhelming. So they go into that doom part, mm -hmm. uh, manic depression. And then what was the last part? Um, um, and terminal doom of the post-human condition are powerfully rehearsed in the language of science fiction. Right. Science fiction is the closest to what's happening in, in the tech body world. Mm. And I'm saying whatever tech body scenarios you read in science fiction, it's further along than that. But look at the key words there. It's post human. Now, this was probably written 30 years ago. Yeah. It was. Okay. It was written pretty long ago. Yeah. So you've got post human, which is obvious now. You've got technological flesh and desires uh, created by the Android meme back then. You've got depression and uh, lost in space and disorientation. And then what was the final? And then he said, on? this is a good song. This is a good line right here. It says, here, images of prosthetic subjects, zombies, cut-ups, and armies of the medieval dead actually slip off the pages of literature to become the terminal ontology of these technolized times. There it is. He's talking about zombie apocalypse. And so... A lot of what is normal perception in, in uh, rap videos, uh, any videos, any movies, is our reality. And this was written 30 years ago. Okay, that's Arthur Croker there yep. up on what's coming. And then, so, he closes, he, then he closes off by saying, Technolized desire is nothing less than a brilliant data screen of future memories. Read it well. It's a survival guide for bodies flatlined by the speed of accelerating technology. 
Now that makes total sense to me. I know the language, but notice he's talking about screen all life. That's, that's, that's us what right the now. People, yeah, Chip that's body. us. And that's the last 10 years, but he wrote it 30 years ago. <clears throat> We're living in uh, memes and memories and data patterns that you uh, you did not make, but they're there to see if you fall for them. And uh, it's all, it's not science, it's science, COVID virus is science fiction written 30 years ago. That is the best poetry of its day because it's described more than anybody else what's going on today that people dimly perceive depending on their education, say. You know what I mean? What they've mm -hmm. uh, learned in their... Uh, we can see down your throat, Bob. Yeah, well, that's okay. Um, <laughs> he, complained, he complained about that last show. Uh, he needs a nap, Dickie. Who, oh, me? I don't need a nap. What are you talking about? Uh, likely... Naked Jack is hot. Anyways, uh, what a tremendous! Uh, put that on your, on your um, whatever you got website, on Instagram. Put that quote on there. Send it to your friends, Jack. Yeah, Send it to I your will. friends. Send it to to Boozy, Boozer. Booz, Boozer. <laughs> Boozy. That's a little Boozy's a rapper. That's a rapper. Lil no, Boozy. who's the guy that came over here? The tall guy. Carlos Boozer. LA Boozer. Laker. Boozer. 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 Send yeah, it to booty. him I will. And, and, and say, we discussed this guy, this quote for five, seven hours. <laughs> no, there's more, though. Said. I got more. I want to read another quote to you. Yeah. This one says, which is to say that culture is not a reflex of political economy, but that society is now a reflex of the key shift in music theory and practice. That is fucking crazy that he said that. I'm going to read yeah. that again because I can talk about this one. Yeah. He said... This is fucking 40 years ago, which is to say or, that... No, no, this is 30 years ago. Yeah, 30 years ago. It says, which is to say that culture is not a reflex of political economy, but that society, but that society is now a reflex of key shift in music theory and practice. And as you see, music has taken over. You know, hip hop artists and, and musicians have literally taken over everything in culture. That's what's happening in 92. Yep. But it's happening now as well. No. You and your buddies tell me rap is dead. It's boring. Remember what Quavo said? He didn't like where it was at. They're looking for new music. Uh, even um, Kanye West is trying to find angel music. It's true. The rap doesn't make it anymore. Uh, it's, I think it's got diluted. There's too, I think social media has made it too applicable or too acceptable to become a rapper. And it's just so much of it. And when everybody does something, that's when it becomes, you know, obsolete. When everybody starts yeah. can do things, it becomes a little obsolete. So that's uh, that's a, so the next line he says, uh, "Sampladella." You know what that word is? Sampladella is the sound made by those early 20th century discoveries in particle physics and relativity relativity theory. The projection of the minds of Einstein and Bohr their faithful exploration of liquid time, curving space, uncertainty fields, and relativity theorems into densely configured and fully oblivion Android music tracks. Awesome. Was, Let's go through line by line. All right. So the, I'll go with, in particle physics and relativity theory, the projection of the minds of Einstein and Bohr, their faithful explorations of liquid time, curving space, uncertainty fields, and relativity theorems into densely configured and fully ambivalent Android music track. It was that's a straight sentence. It's a lot of yeah, shit to that, kind of take in right there. Yeah, that's all the ideas of uh, 20th century first half of the 20th century um, physics, and he's saying it is outdone by music. That music mimes the uh, the theories mm. the way music is. Uh, and uh, what's the last couple of words of the last sentence you read? Um, into densely configured and fully ambivalent Android music tracks. Android, you know, this is the what, time of the Android, Android music 30 years ago. Yep, and, yep. and nobody can tell what the hell is studio produced, uh, digitally produced, or live uh, stuff. Um, mm. So it's ambiguous. It's not, uh, Kroger has this great quote, um, what you thought you saw because you thought you heard something uh, isn't there anymore. And mm -hmm. he calls that quantum fluctuations. Uh, we reality has this endless culture is made up of these blips uh, that
that don't have any stability. He's getting at that in that quote because he's, he's quoting quantum particles and, and okay. quantum physics. So do you, do you find uh, uh, that you can understand a bit of it? Don't you find it? Yeah, poetic? I find a, a little bit very poetic just because of some of the things that he's speaking about. You know, some, you know, when he says culture is not a reflex of political economy, but the society is not a reflex of key shifts in music theory and pra like, you know, we've talked about how music has enhanced things, but we also talk about the death of music where, you know, the top artists, like you said, you heard Kanye say, man, I'm looking for that new sound. I'm trying to find the angel music. So it's, it's, you made, like Here's I said, idea. do yeah. something. So he's talking about the physical economy, business, hardware, and money-making has been superseded, swallowed up by the white house and the words that makes a market. And it is musical. Mm. So every president will invite some uh, famous musician, artist. Mm. yeah, artist to be acknowledged. And he has a great quote um, where he talks about the heavy metal music of the 80s, uh, high tech music, the different phases over the last 40 years. And he shows how the economic theories of the day match the music style. Yeah. So McLuhan said we live entirely by music. He said that 40 years ago. Music is the electrification and comfort. It's almost like the pleasures of the death zone, the mm -hmm. pleasures of death uh, made a constant massage. You used to go into banks and the clerks uh, would be, have the radio on in the background. Back in the 40s, 50s, you could never have the radio on. Music had not been absorbed by the Android meme yet. So he talks about Android flesh there. So Croker is very good at describing aspects of the Android meme. Got it. So, okay, here's another one that I think is, this is, this is crazy. This is from 1989. It says, just, li just like those other black holes from outer space, Hollywood is postmodern to this extent. It has no center, only a spreading dead zone of exhaustion. Inertia, I don't even know how to say that word. How do you say this word? I-N-E-R-T-I-A. -I -I Inertia and brilliant Inertia. decay. Inertia. Inertia and brilliant decay. And that's funny because Hollywood is kind of like, <laughs> there is really no Hollywood anymore. People can't shoot movies. I've talked, I'm not going to say names, but I've talked to a, a lot of movie directors and they said, man, he's about to retire from movies because he can't really shoot anything. They can't travel. They can't do a lot of things. And Hollywood has become like, you know, brilliant decay. You know, there's lots of brilliance, but there isn't that much Hollywood. And you're starting to see even more superstars pop up through social media, having nothing to do with Hollywood. So, you know, this guy wrote this shit back in 1989. Do you want to talk about that? I'll read it one more time. Just like the other black holes from outer space, Hollywood is postmodern to this extent. What is he, what is he saying about Hollywood is postmodern to this extent? Post-human? Oh, post-human, okay. It's the, it's the uh, entertainment fixture of robotoids, uh, organic robotoids, which humans were becoming in the 80s. Dr. Beter uh, celebrated that. Um, and he's saying that you look out with a telescope at space, you might see uh, what the Hubble telescope shows you, black holes, galaxies, and that. That's nature. You have to understand in the 20th century, nature and its cliches merge with technology. So he's saying Hollywood is a black hole. Okay? So mm. the categories they teach you in physics or astronomy in school don't apply to the world the last 30 years that nature has mixed. The, the colossal supernova is what happened to uh, Harvey Weinstein. He got supernova, he, went, he blew himself up yep. like star clusters do. So Coker is correct to mix in uh, nature and the more grandiose nature, mix it in with technological phenomena like Hollywood and show how it leads to what? What's the final words? Um, then it says, it says Hollywood is postmodern to this extent. It has no center, only a spreading dead zone of exhaustion, inertia, and brilliant decay. Now, that's someone who's um, 50 years old. He's seen a lot of movies, lived mm -hmm. a lot of 20th century life. He grew up and he matured. So he's describing a state of mind that you'll get to in another 15 or, or 20 years. Um, he, is, he is bored with the production of Hollywood, but Hollywood increasingly was made for kids. So you always got naive kids coming in and, and thinking Hollywood is real. And that the, uh, 
when you realize it's dead and a fake and different people of different ages in college and in their 20s come to this point, they get mad at it. Then they might try to make their own underground movies. But that, that cycle of perception, those stages of sophistication are applicable to every generation since Croker wrote that. Yeah. So you're saying that's the way movies are now. You're arriving at Croker's state of mind because you've seen enough media. You're yep. in your 30s and you could be a little more bored yep. uh, with it than you were when you were 15. Yep. I mean, you go back and look at movies that you saw when you were 15, you're probably going to be embarrassed that you thought they were so great. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, more technology, more things came. So let's talk about movies. Bob, if someone was to play you in a movie, who would it be and why? If someone had to play Bob? Uh, I'd, I'd like Sky Goddess Sue to play me. No, it has to be a real actor. Or do you even know any oh. actors? Well, everybody's an actor nowadays. That's one of McLuhan's aphorisms. Under satellite global theater conditions, there is no spectator. Everybody is crew. And so... Those that go to movies or, or engage Instagram like we are, we're creating employment for the guys that run this environment, that made mm. it. You know, what's mm -hmm. his name? Uh, the guy who left? Uh, Levant James or something? Who? Levant. Who was that? The guy that kicked you off six months ago. Oh, no. no we're not getting into that. We're not going to do that right No, here. what's his name? We're not I don't, Jay. We're not, I'm not. We're not getting into that right now. Let's, let's, <laughs> Why let's not? Keep this don't shit. be afraid. I'm no, not no, being afraid. Get... I'm just not. I'm not going to get into that. Let's keep. Let's keep this shit no, going. No, no. But I'm saying he I know made an environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He yeah. made it possible. Yeah, um, for sure. So he needs content. So the content or the the welfare system, the audiences on welfare, are employers. They employ the bureaucrats that give them the money. So uh, now, why was I trying to say that? Um, these distinctions, these categories don't apply. Okay, so so everybody's an actor, everybody's crew. And they're trying Biden's trying to make that a bureaucratic situation and call it socialism, put everybody on money. Well, if they don't put us on money, we still got a lot of other media that's money and is uh distracting you. The, the wealth that everybody has on the planet is incredible. Yeah, uh, I mean I feel like there's so much money on them and I feel like there's just money everywhere, right? I mean <laughs> They, no, there's uh, wealth everywhere. There's wealth we, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, there's people I know went to the boondocks in Africa. Nobody yeah. there. And they bumped into people with cell phones in yeah. the most abandoned, poor places. Yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, so anybody can play me. I mean, I, I'm not limited to stupid uh, Kevin Spacey and these people. I don't even <laughs> like them. Uh, I, I'm saying that... Um, Sky Goddess would be an interesting version because she knows my life. She yeah. knows a lot of it. So yeah. she could actually act out uh, from memory a lot of it. But okay, yeah. let's take you on the Android meme level. Yeah, the only one Android. actor. Um, I'm out of touch with the younger people. Yeah. Uh, they did, it's funny, I posted an article, the, the Nirvana of Ben Affleck's life. Uh, ben okay? Affleck, yeah. Yeah, so it's about how he got depressed and he got pissed off and he divorced somebody. And then he came back and he was starting to look healthy, but he'd be, they'd photograph him staring off into empty space. Like he was wondering what the hell has happened to me. So yeah. all these alienated points are made in the article yesterday, but the picture shows him picking up a bunch of ice cream and stuff that was delivered to his front door. And there's a whole bunch of things he's picking up and they're falling down. Well, that's me in the image of me eating ice cream. Yeah, you so, too much, you eat a lot of ice cream. And I live in Nirvana. So Ben Affleck, uh, he, he could play me, and it would be about how he gets real happy because he's kind of confused right now. So what that would, would be my life, getting well, what happier. Would, what, would you say that, more. what would you tell people to help them get happy? I feel like there's so many fucking sad people um, in this world. What, what, would you, what, what are some tips that you would give people to start to get into that happiness feel? I've got about eight responses, okay. uh, different kinds of responses, different emotions. Uh, I would say keep listening to this show as much as possible. I mean, you're, you're not going to get anybody addressing you and not charging you. It's for free, and you're going to hear crazy ideas, interesting ideas, uh, and with humor and with uh, our products. If you're depressed, yeah. 
you take our products. They'll make you happy. They do because you're, you're, you've got a lot of deficient magnesium. You're deficient in the minerals. You need to get uh, the minerals replenished and you can't do it unless you use our products because they're tiny enough. They're called pico size that gets into the cell. So again, you got any problems, we're the answer. Got it, got it. And then well, we are. And, uh, and you, can, you can call this, you know, sales pitch. Fuck that. I'm telling you the facts. No, I mean, it ain't a sales pitch. I mean, this is my, this is, it's on my platform and it's not a sales pitch. I'm, I mean, I have, all, I have fucking all the products upstairs. My mom's on it, my dad's on it, my girl's on it. We're, we're all on it. And I mean, I second that, right? So I'm going to get into one last Croker, Croker uh, quote and we're going to get Croker. off this Croker thing. So he wrote, shopping malls are liquid TVs for the end of the 21st century, 20th century. A whole micro circuitry of desire, ideology, and expenditure for processed bodies drifting through the cyberspace of ultra capitalism. Right. Now, when you go to a mall, you're seeing one shop after another. That's like you're watching TV back in the 70s and 80s when this was written, and you're chat, you know, you're clicking from one channel to the next, to one scene. Yeah. That kind of variety in the mall. And the malls became undeniably popular, you know, in suburbia all across America because it was simulating the TV environment. But notice he puts in a natural word, liquid, liquid mm -hmm. TV. Mm -hmm. it, it compared to the bulky TV of the 50s, 60s, 80s, and 90s TV, it really flowed. It yeah. was high tech and all yep. that stuff. It had the digital coming in. So... His terms are a very precise scientific statement of your condition you're living in. For so sure. read it again. Shopping malls are liquid TVs for the end of the 20th century. A whole micro circuitry of desire, ideology, and expenditure for processed bodies drifting through the cyberspace of ultra capitalism. Ultra capitalism. Yeah. Uh, we're post ultra capitalism now, uh, and we're drifting. Uh, that's the chip body, and there were some other words at the end that fit uh, my Cyberspace. Term. Yes. Uh, so he's, descri he's basically describing the unbelievable effects of the chip landscape turning you into a chip body. That's the general uh, theme. And he's doing this uh, before people really were living in chip bodies. They were in the chip landscape. Yeah, because this shit uh, is old. This is, he's writing this stuff. I mean, where's he getting this fucking knowledge from to be able to – how does he – how is he matching up this and, and saying these things that make sense now? From because, he he, because he read the right people. He read McLuhan, and then he read the post-McLuhan derivatives of McLuhan, as I named Bojard, Virilio, Brent, uh, Barth, and, uh, and uh, Derrida, and Bojard. These people uh, were describing. Coker has written books on how he, what he got from each one of them. So he, he was the most advanced uh, surfer of the language of the books he read. The books were obscure, avant-garde. He specialized in that, became an expert on it, and then he made up his own new language writing on that. And then because he was quoting the accurate people, uh, it became real uh, and it was actualized. And here we are. I think um, what I'm doing with Dick Dobbs, though, is a bit further than Croker. But yeah, look how, sure. look how far Croker is, and yeah. and a brilliant genius. Uh, okay, you got to be really amazing to uh, get past Croker, and we, my buddies, are amazing. Exactly. What we do. Well, this, well, the next, this is crazy right here. This is the last one. I thought I was gonna, that was the last one, but this is like really the last one. It just resonates. He says, "The future of America." Okay, mind you, this is in like just thirty years ago as well. The future of America may or may not bring forth a black president, a woman president, a Jewish president, but it most certainly always will have a suburban president, a president whose senses have been defined by the suburbs, where lakes and public baths mutate into backyards and freeways, where walking means driving, where talking means telephoning, where watching means TV, and where living means real, imitation life. Wow. Well, the chemical body can go also so far. You can't, the actual chip body that we're made up of is invisible, inaudible. It's very hard to, to make it um, concrete to people. 
So you have to fall back on the bureaucracy of the White House and a centralized image of, of uh, law and order. So because it has to be a chemical body, the last utopia of chemical body is the suburban environment. Now, you, people become unhappy if they're stuck in their chemical body suburbia, but they've got their TVs and computers, so they uh, survive it. Survive, so he's exactly. saying for the chemical body's uh, sense of law. Hold on, let me open it back up. I exited out. Um, he said that a president whose senses have been defined by the suburbs where lakes and public baths mutate into backyards and freeways, where walking means driving, where talking means telephoning, where watching means TV, and where living means imitation life. Right. So the early simulation of the global theater in the 60s and 70s is uh, dominated by the White House, American Empire. It's an image of a chemical body. We're not chemical bodies anymore. We're made up of invisible processes. And so that's What do you mean we're made up of invisible processes? What do you mean? Because we don't see ourselves because all we do is see ourselves on the chip body? What do you mean we by don't that? See, you can't see the technology which creates the chip landscape, which uh, becomes a chip body. You can't see it. You can look at, a, look at the fucking little uh, layers of... Uh, chips in the back of your phone or something, but you don't understand and understand, can visualize the processes that make this all happen. That make this happen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's it's true. Elect we don't know electricity. Yeah. You, can't see, you can't see electricity. So because the White House is an obsolete institution and it must refer to chemical body uh, law and order, uh, then the image that the chemical body was last seen in, suburbia, means the president always has the suburban sensibilities of yeah. a dumb chemical body. McLuhan said, here's how McLuhan defined the president of the United States. He defined it as the automated, that means chip body, the automated presidential surrogate is a superlative nobody. Look at the presidents, they're all nobodies, they're all dumb. And uh, it, politicians look even worse, they look like gangsters. Um, that whole chemical body bureaucratic law and order world is so obsolete. Uh, that it has no influence on the real criminal world of white collar crime and everything else that people do illegally. Um, so, uh, what was I saying there? Um, don't know. Uh, what, what, what was the last idea you got for me? Um, you were talking about uh, what, what McLuhan defined presidents as. Oh, yeah. Great. The automated presidential surrogate, that means that the actual control of what the White House represents law and order is done by the secret intelligence agency. Yeah, it's not the president. They're the president right. getting information from someone else, basically. Yeah. And so you gotta you gotta look like a nobody so that people who still think they're human bodies here uh, identify with it. So you're gonna be superlative nobody. Uh, and uh, you're automated through the chip world. Uh, that communicates you every day what the White House has to speak on in public. Yeah. So remember that. The automated presidential surrogate is a superlative nobody. Donald Trump was the first superlative somebody to become president. He wasn't oh, yeah, even a he was, Oh, yeah, he was because he was like, he was a fucking entertainer and investor and everything. That's true. I forgot about that. Most Well, that you were known, you know, Bill Clinton came from money and things like that. But like, you know, people knew Trump from, you know, the shows that Bill he was Clinton. on. The, the regular Bill Clinton didn't come from money, but the mythical Bob uh, Bill Clinton was, he was the son of a rock, a bastard son of a Rockefeller. Winter oh, really? Rock. But yeah, that's not true, you're saying. But that's, that's not, that's TV exaggeration or maybe true. You won't know. You won't know. Uh, no, Trump is the first billionaire, entertainer, everything. A, a, the guy who lived the American dream and got so much status and money, he could say, fuck you to the world. And he took his fuck you attitude into the White House. Mm. This freaked out the chemical body people, the people who live in the past. Yeah, because they're not they used to someone coming in like that. What? Hey, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, weren't re they weren't ready for someone coming in like being like they're bigger than... Activating fucking yeah. croakers, what Croker wrote. They should have been reading Croker for 30 years to get ready for what's happening. Because I was reading Croker and the correct people to read, I became a super genius. Yeah. Uh, and then, then uh, the astroplane showed up in my lap. 
uh, because I deserved it. And here I am in charge in a very strange way because it's a mixture of the six bodies, not just the five. The real authority comes from another level. And you, Jack, uh, wouldn't understand this five years ago, but you don't find it far-fetched what I'm saying now. I don't know. Because you've no. seen it unfold with yeah. the help of your bride there. 100%. Um, yeah. So, Bob, what would you, can you break down phys physical and non-physical? What would you define non-physical as? You know, because non-physical is a thing that we don't see that's doing the things that we act for in real life. There's got to be something happening in another realm that's bringing these things to us. So how can you break down what non-physical is? Uh, you can't use your sensory data because it's not sensory. So you imagine something that's not uh, registered in your eyes and ears and touch and movement. Uh, so it can't be described in words. Can't that's non-physical. But what's happened is that indescribable, intangible substance, ectoplasm, there's different terms for the ineffable, uh, has merged with the physical. Mm. So there is a physicality to spirit now, and it showed up in the voice of Dickie Dobbs. We can hear, we can hear spirit talking now. Yeah. So would you say that now people, if people were really tapped in, they really have like superpowers right now that they could be using to really create the life that they want, but everyone's so numb, it's kind of hard to even get to that, that ultimate feeling? You don't need to develop superpowers. What we're doing is a whole technical apparatus that was invented over the last hundred years and is sitting here for us to use and project ourselves into populations and whoever's listening. And to uh, it doesn't cost us anything. It's a super angelic, a super powerful environment we're engaging here. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know how it's made. Yeah, or, if, or I don't even know if what they say it's made of is actually what it's made of. Yeah, uh, I, I, and uh, Dickie Dobbs would say no. There's our our products have strange, interesting substances in them that are super effective. So uh, that non-physical means you don't register it. It's not physical. Uh, Ion used to say to me, Dickie Dobbs would say to me, "How come you can hear us if we're non-physical?" They were trying to point out that something new had happened on March 18, 2009, when they entered into the physical and mixed with it. It was no longer pure non-physical anymore. It's uh, Dick Dobbs saying no, Sky God is saying I am, and Super Angelic, and Overseas saying I love this, hold my beer. Uh, officially, you guys always get on live together. Well, yeah, what's that mean? Uh, well, we get on dead? Uh, we get on dead together? <laughs> no, what? Uh, it says uh, Sky Goddess. It's, it's great. Hey, Dickie hey, Dick Dodge, you got, Dick uh, Dodge, you got any questions for us? I mean, we love to hear your questions, Dickie Dodge. We know where you come from, and you got a, a beautiful mind. Can you give us some questions to talk about, you know what I mean, to kind of get this going? It's 11 o'clock here on the East Coast. What time is it where you're at, Bob? I don't know. Uh, it's five hours. It's um, Somebody uh, said I heard Trump got you. a bag on his head. Is that true? <laughs> I heard, basically that means I heard somebody trying to kill Trump. You told me that it, it, tons of, it's been multiple suicide attacks. I mean, not suicide, yeah, they, multiple they, they, attacks on Trump, correct? Okay, the time. It is 6.09, so I'm two hours You're five. Behind. I'm in Maryland. I'm in Baltimore right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, five hours. All right, I didn't know that. Um, so I heard Trump get a bag on his head, head. That's a cliche from mafia movies. You know, he's yeah, been sure. hijacked. And he's, he's in prison. Uh, no, 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 no. no. He's, got... he's saying he got a bag on his head where he, somebody, people are paying people to kill him. Like he got a bag on his head. So yeah, basically yeah. a bag oh, is, is that money. What the phrase That's means? what that means. Yeah, that means I would like... say it's the opposite. Trump's got the whole country uh, with a bag on his head. He could kill this country any moment. He could bomb nuclear, do all kinds of shit if he had went psychotic. No, he said he saw so... a post that said that. Is it? I mean, you... Is, you you talked about that last week about how it's been multiple attacks on Trump's uh, trying to take his life. I mean, it makes well, sense. where uh, Google it. Look on somebody, Drudge to see it. Somebody it's said a picture of Trump with a bag on his head. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now this is Tech Body playing with this guy. Officially, it's been zapped by Tech Body. I don't know. Collar. What's it, what's it, what's it, your Dicky Dow was talking about collar. What do you mean <laughs> by that? Clothing. 
Yeah, send us the post. Yeah, send the send the article. Put the send the uh, post in the link. Put the link. The thing is, look at what you're experiencing. If if they say it's Trump, how do you know it's fucking Trump? You don't know nothing about what you're perceiving. The tech bodies play, learn how to perceive nothing. That's more real than what you're thinking. That you have no clue what was set up in that photograph. I mean, uh, maybe they're trying to say he's arrested or something stupid. Uh, I don't know what caller means. Um, a caller. I don't know what that means either. No, she's, she's it, talking about I'm not saying I'm not thinking you're joking. You saw something, but you're not questioning the reality of what you saw. Basically, what you saw is nothing. A quantum blip. You're believing your eyes and ears too much. So did you say this? OK, let's talk about that. Believing the eyes and ears, because a lot of times I hear you say a lot of times what we see may not even be what we really see yeah. You know what I mean? So how could you tell somebody not to believe their eyes and ears when it's like, I'm waking up, I'm looking at it right now, I'm looking at this fucking screen, and I'm seeing myself and you. you know. Okay. This technology has been run by electricity. You can't see it. can't taste it. You can't know it. But it's making, supposedly making this whole sensory experience possible. So what is non-sensory is more real than your sensory. At mm. least without the electricity, you couldn't have this experience. And you don't know what electricity is. Mm. Very true. What photograph? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, the mob, Bob. Yeah, this is Bob you know, haranguing with the mob. He may be this saying that the CKLN. mob got a hit on Trump. This is CKLN. What'd you say? He might be talking about the mob got a hit on Trump. Ah, there's a, the mob uh, got a hit on Biden. Uh, I was telling me that the other day. Really? Yeah. Everybody's I mean, got a fucking uh, bullet on them. That's what you got to realize, people. You're not in the theater. You're yeah. on the on the front line. <laughs> uh, it's the only. It's my indoor shorts, uh, Dicky. Um, uh, I wear uh, black shorts when I go to the beach. He might be talking about me. I got on blue pants. I don't know the fuck he knows that, but obviously he knows everything. <laughs> okay, well, no. I can know. I knows. Yeah, for Easy, sure. Easy, boss. Knows. Look at this. He's trying to threaten me. I'm the, I created you, Ion. So, Bob, why is it uh, so dark on your screen? Are you turn the light off or something? Me? Oh. Yeah. Dark oh, because, as shit. Yeah, I, uh, I don't have a light here. Oh, you don't? Oh, it's nighttime yeah. now. Yeah, let me see. Okay, does that oh, help? Yeah, it helps. That helps. Okay. Yeah, it's better. Right. Yeah, you're in a black screen. Okay, you're in a sorry. black hole. Look, let's have someone else. Sky Goddess and, and Dickie are too limited. You're not saying stuff. Get us going. Say Who said that? Who said that? the window. What? Who said what? You said Sky relax. Goddess said what? Relax, baby, relax. Come on, Sky Goddess, show your knowledge. Flash some knowledge in our eyes. Ask some questions, Sky Goddess Sue. Give us something. Is that Sue Bone, by the way? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I never met her in real life. Dope. I hear so much about you, Sue Bone. Never met you, but I heard a lot about you. <laughs> this guy is out of control. <laughs> I'm not going to get naked because that gets Jack in trouble. Because we don't know. There are people who think Biden's president already, and they're starting to bring in new crazy laws already. What's, what new crazy laws have they brought in? What are you talking about? Um, uh, they're scrolling through, finding the names of people who voted for Trump in 2016, and they're going to see them fired. They're going to find out where they work, and they're going to fire them. There's a big purging, and this, is, this has been announced by Robert Reich. Interesting, R-E-I-C-H, like first, third, Reich. So he's a, an acceptable intellectual economist mm -hmm. who was uh, a cabinet position in the 90s for Clinton. Uh, he quit for the second term, kind of lost his reputation. I, he probably teaches at Harvard. He suggested that all those that supported Trump from 2016 to now should be disciplined and fired. What? How irresponsible. Yeah. Now, did he really say that? The tech body presented that. How do I fucking know if he said You that? saw that on the internet. It's yeah, it's absolutely look it up. Robert Reich, R E I C H, uh, Trumpers fired, you know, just to make a collage to see what comes up. Trumpers to be fired, yeah, the Green New Deal is part of it. 
Washington, D.C. as a state. So Robert Reich, R-E-I-C-H. Uh, what, what are you spelling? R-I-E-C-H. Oh, Robert R Reich. No, oh. R-E-I-C-H, Reich. Reich, Robert Reich, a mayor has already fired Trump. That's what you're talking about. Okay, but look, at firing Trumpers, put in pro-Trumpers. Trumpers. Yeah. He said this about three weeks ago. Yeah, look at snow is on it. They're identifying Trump and getting them fired. You see, this is mob battles, mob rule. So I say that there's a civil war, a global village war, a universal war bringing in aliens. There's the well, virtual let's talk about reality. that. We got to talk about that shit, the aliens. Let's make sure we get, stay on that because you've been telling me about these aliens for a minute. And you're starting to see more and more shit come out about aliens. You hear fucking Rogan talking about it. What is your thought process on the aliens, Bob? Well, the aliens are, are, have come here to interact with me. And I have a pretty incredible history. I'm the only one qualified to talk to them. And they apparently will talk in the language of Finnegan's Wake, which I've studied for 50 years. Okay. And that's the hardest James book Stru to even fucking think about. You know, that's Finnegan's right. Wake. Yeah. It's about our time today. You can't think about reality. He made a book. See, that's more prophetic than Croker or, any, or McLuhan. They, McLuhan studied Finnegan's Wake to get to his statement. And then Croker studied McLuhan to get to his later development. But fitting his wake, it turns out they would appear to James Joyce back in the 30s, and he didn't believe it. So he thought he was drunk. So he would drink to encourage the seeing, having these visions. But they were real. And then they began working for the Nazis. And the Nazis got ahead of everybody in the 30s. They had the most advanced uh, technology. That's why they declared war in the world. They had the advantage of the, te of the technology. Um, then the Nazis, when they supposedly lost World War II, the elite scientists like the famous Werner von Braun were brought over to America to build the space race vehicles. Mm. Uh, because Russia, the Soviet Union, had gotten the other half of the Nazi scientists to go to Moscow. So you had a, a war based on who gets to the moon first. Mm. Um, uh, so the aliens have been in the Pentagon for a long time, and they're getting ready to to enter into public awareness, and they're going to do that through me. So okay. I'm very involved. And so, so the aliens, the aliens week, are at the Pentagon right now. Yeah, and and they've been there since uh, 911. They oh, snuck really? in. The Pentagon was blown up at 911. That's how they got in there. They've been hanging out at various nuclear plants in Tennessee from 88 to 2001. So for 13 years, they were hiding. So how do you know this uh, stuff though? Where are you getting, are you getting this from your Dickie Dobbs or are you? I mean, what's Dobbs, that? yeah. Oh, okay, I'm following orders. Dickie got Dobbs it. is the one telling me to do all this and got say it, all got this. It. Got it. Uh, look, see, stop, you make us blush. See, you know, <laughs> look at that. Uh, it's, it's sky goes sweet. So, so where we're at today, just about a week ago or less, a, many people saw this UFO floating over uh, Honolulu, one of the Hawaiian Islands, just across the bay from me. And I asked, I asked Dickie Dobbs, are they there uh, to, to message me to indicate they're on to me and get ready for the meeting? And he said, duh, mm. of course, that's why they're there. So this big UFO sighting that many people saw, registered a real one, not a hallucination, was directed to me. Now, Dick Dobbs just named the Teleco Plains. They're in Tennessee or Kentucky or someplace. Look them up. That's where they were from 88 to, to uh, 2001. Mm. Now, they've been in the Pentagon, and Biden, the dummy, is going to uh, nominate a woman or appoint a woman to be Secretary of Defense or something, and she knows of the aliens, and she's going to ask them to leave the planet. And so they're very pissed off, and they want to meet with me to discuss what's going on. This is the most craziest shit that has probably ever been said on probably any type of platform. But I must say, you showed me some shit that I'm not going to talk about that fucking blew my mother fucking mind. So I'm not going to sit oh, here and go. Oh, your mother? Your mother? No, blew my mother fucking mind. The stuff that you showed <laughs> okay. me with these alien stuff. Like, you showed me visuals. Now look at like, this. See, Dickie Dobbs note. Watts Bar is the other place. 
where the aliens hung out from 88 to 2001. Watts Bar and Teleco Plains. Look them up. They're, they're parts of, they're on the East Coast. Watt uh, Bar? Yeah. Look at, yeah, put that in, spell it right, and see which state it is. Watts Bar Nuclear Plant. The Watts Bar Nuclear Plant in the Tennessee Valley Authority Nuclear Reactor Pair used for electric power generation. It is located on a 1,700-acre site in Tennessee. So Watts Bar was a nuclear plant. So he said yeah. he was over there chilling out and shit in the nuclear now, plant. Now look what's happening here. I announced uh, two minutes ago that they hung out nuclear plants. This you crazy did. You definitely did say that. <laughs> named definitely... a fucking place uh, to, <laughs> so people could say, oh, you guys scripted that. No, I haven't got time to script anything. I got too much to say anyways. Uh, yeah. So that's proof that there's a bit of intelligence, real information exchanged here. I mean, and who the fuck even knows about you, Watts Bar? <laughs> what? I said, I mean, who even knows about Watts Bar anyway? Why did right. I just say that? Exactly. Who would even know it? And I could play you recordings where Dickie Dobbs talked about this on our show two months ago. Mm. Choke them yeah, if they great. can't take a fuck. <laughs> uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority is very important, uh, built in the 30s. Major hydro dam kind of place. Yeah, that's what it's Overseas yeah, Spitz loves this. Overseas Spitz <laughs> loves this. <laughs> crazy talk. It's the craziest talk. <laughs> it's the craziest shit you ever heard in your life. <laughs> so, you know, do you, I mean, like I said, like just how you saw motherfuckers climbing up, you know, this building and, and by the White House and all these things, like I, you can't be opposed to thinking that this shit is not real when you hear someone talk about an alien or whatever. It's like the craziest shit that you would never thought you would ever see. It's all, we've all seen it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so those almost, guys crawling up, I wouldn't be surprised um, they were dead. Come on, Bob. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, that's a whole. That's a whole nother. Like I said, <laughs> it's a whole other realm, and that we're getting into. And like I said, we don't know. We really don't fucking know. You don't know. Well, we don't know what the media is telling us these days. Fuck you, going, Bob. Bob just left to uh, do something, ladies and gentlemen. Dick, let's get some uh, let's get some let's get some questions going. TVA. Dick, you got any questions right now? We wait for Bob to come back. I hope y'all enjoying the show, man. Like I said, on this show, you may hear the craziest shit that you've ever heard, ever. So don't be afraid. Just enjoy. You know, we're going to give you as much information as we can. You take it how you want to take it. We just going to talk. And that's what we doing, man. Welcome to the Step Back with Jack podcast with my brother Bob and Dickie. One day, you guys may be able to hear Dickie talk. Um <laughs> No, nah. hopefully we one day we hear Dickie Dobbs talk. You know, you think Bob has knowledge? This guy Dickie Dobbs has fucking I mean, I mean ultimate knowledge. Don't be saying let's get it, yo ass scared. I know you ain't trying to get on here, Dickie. Talking about let's get it, cause we bring you in. Chase, come here. Somebody wants to meet you. Come here. What the hell is that, Bob? Come here. Somebody wants to say hi to you. Come here. Let's just say hi. All right, quick. Hi. Yeah, talk in this mic. Come over here. Talk in this mic over here. Okay. Hi. Hey, hold on, come back, come back. So Chase, mm -hmm. tell everybody tell everybody your name. Everybody, this is my nephew Chase. Hi. Um, this kid is the one that says he wants to be a a, a YouTuber. A, a YouTuber. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey Chase, come back on here. Come back on here. Chase, you can't be <laughs> Hey Chase. <laughs> you ain't never heard a microphone before, huh? This is crazy, right? Put him back on. Get back in the camera, man. So, Chase, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions while we're, while we're waiting for Bob to come back. Sit on my lap. Sit on my lap right here. Okay. Sit on my lap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? 
don't chase. Be serious, man. You're you're in, you're real. This is real deal. Come on, let's do it. You say you want to be a celebrity. It's your turn. I'm what thinking you, about it. All right. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm thinking about it. You don't have much time to think about it. Say what's up to Uncle Bob. Hi. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a football player. What? There, there isn't any anymore. I'm serious. When did you want, like football? You never told me you like football. <laughs> I do like football. You don't like basketball? I I like football more than basketball. That's crazy. Bob, you back? You ready, Bob? All right, you can stay on the show, okay? So, um, all right, Chase, go get some rest, man. Tell everybody bye. Tell everybody uh, what your name is. And Hi, my name is Chase. Bye. All right, thanks, bro. See you later. Yeah, you're, you're not fooling bye. anybody, Jake. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> Wow, where did you just go just now? I I had to go uh, get Carolyn to get the plug. Oh, got it, got it. Low got battery. It. Low battery. I'm gonna hang that up. Um, we don't know where my thing is. Um, I, I also got some food, Jack. Uh, what'd you get? A stew. What Great kind? stew. Yeah. What kind of stew is this, Carol? Chicken. Barley sausage. With what in it? Barley sausage. Molly sausage? What is that? What is that? <laughs> barley. Oh, barley and sausage. Okay, barley, barley. Oh, that's nice. So the kid's name was Chase? Yeah, Chase. His name is Chase Air. It's a pretty cool name. It's both his parents are track stars, so it's fitting. And his name is Chase Air. Oh, he's saying you got a jacket, Jack. He's, he's lifting right now. He's limping? He's lifting the weights right now. Come over, see how you all strong you are. Is this your computer, Carol? Don't drop it. Oh. All right, let me see how strong you are. Get on this side. Come on this side. I need another. Most like. Chase is back. Chase is back. We want to show how strong he is. That's impressive. It's impressive. That's very impressive, Chase. Very impressive. But it won't help. It's only Wait, six pounds. He said it's only six pounds. That's what he said. It's only six pounds. Listen, buddy, you got to learn fast. Are you are you exercising your chip body? You're exercising your chip body. That's this body that you're looking at on here, YouTube, all that. You want to be a YouTube star. You're on YouTube all day. You wake up on YouTube and you go to sleep on YouTube. <laughs> What are you going to do with that? And get rid of these weights before you drop them on my feet. And it's not, not going to be happy about that. Your feet that. are over there, bro. <laughs> it don't matter. We don't. So Chase has came and, inter... and came in the show, and he wants to be a superstar. And we talked about, you know, these kids. All these kids want to be instant entertainers. Huh? Everybody can hear you, bro. Everybody can hear you right <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, tell him he ain't Christian. fooling anybody. Jack, tell him yeah. he ain't fooling anybody. <laughs> you ain't full of dough, buddy. <laughs> Come here, Mom. Come here real fast. Come here. Just say hello real fast. Come here. No, come here on the camera and say hello. Come on this side. Let the camera. Chase, let Nana come over real fast. She wants to say, let her introduce her to my mom. He already been on. <laughs> Introducing my grandma. Yeah, this kid is crazy. Hey. Everybody, this is... Oh, put the headphones on, huh? Everybody, this is my mom. Say hello to my beautiful mother. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hi. Miss McClain. How That's are you? Bob, Hey, Hey, everyone. This is my beautiful mother. She's just... You're, looking, you're glowing right now. I'm glowing. You're glowing right now, girl. You want to sit down? You want to sit right here? No, no. Here you go. good. Okay. Well, I just wanted to introduce everybody. This is my beautiful mother right here. Hello, everyone. If you're wondering where I got my looks from, I got them from her. And um, just wanted to say hello. And she's going to go. And everybody's saying hello. We're getting a lot of hearts. They must like you or something, Mom. Hi, everyone. But welcome to the show. Uh, we'll probably be on here for, you know, Bob is getting late. We're going to go for another 30 minutes, and I got to get I gotta get out of here. Kelly, I've been trying to talk to my son since 8 o'clock. Has she been trying to talk to okay. my son since it's it's uh Kinley said hi. Hey Kinley. <laughs> she knows Kinley, Bob. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I do know Kinley. It's great seeing you. I wish I could see you, Kinley. <laughs> Call Jack on FaceTime so I can see you. <laughs> All right. I didn't know we looked so much alike, Jack. Yeah, we do look alike. We do. I know. All right. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for dropping by. <laughs> All right, y'all too loud. Y'all got to go upstairs. We got to get the series. Y'all got to go upstairs. Chase, Christian, y'all too loud right now. Bob, so you don't Sky eat Goddess, yet? Sky Goddess asked a good question. What do you love the best about Dick Dobbs, Jack? Uh, what do I like the best about Dick Dobbs? Um, he a real one. I don't think I don't think they get any more real than that. Hmm. Real, the realness, the all knowing, my nigga. Like I mean, it's, it's tons of things I could say about. It. It's just the realness. There's not too many real people left in this game where they're gonna tell you like it is. He gonna tell you like it is straight like that. Yeah, he just said it. He said, we love to fuck. <laughs> exactly, my boy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, are you done eating? Are you, you, you get your little, uh, your little, uh. Sustenance. Got it. So, let's, let's, let's get back to the question. Let's, let's, no MGH1. I think we got to cool it down. I think Dicky died, so we got to slow it down on that. I think we're giving away a little bit too much information on that. We got to chill on that. Oh, I'm moving it up. I didn't see. What do you love about Dick Dobbs? Uh, whole character. Big jewels. These aliens. Okay, we can talk about the aliens. Um, He's in my blood. I asked. I asked if the aliens. Uh, I asked uh, Dickie Dobbs if the aliens go to the same place we went to when we died, non-physical. And Dick Dobbs said, they don't have souls. They don't go anywhere. When they finish, they live a long time. And when they finish living, they just evaporate. Which is interesting. Very interesting. So, so um, uh, there, I just implied that they could wipe us out real easy. But if they wanted they, but they want access to Dickie Dobbs, which is unique in the universe. So they're here being polite and kind and cooperative. Um, I'll get that, Mom. I'll get it. I'll get it. They're being they're here being nice, kind, and cooperative because they want access to Ion because they're part of our plan. Those that survived this era, these tribulations we'll be getting on a quote space vehicle which they'll find out is the earth the earth is a space vehicle and it's going to turn into a mobile space vehicle at the right time with the help of the aliens and we're going to sail out and go through a portal in the sun which is called a stargate and then we're going to jockey around a couple other barriers and then we're going to head out to the andromeda galaxy and finally return home from where we came from where we came. Now, Got it. I, I did not know this uh, until two months ago when Ion told us. And uh, this is why Donald Trump built the Space Force. He listens to our show. His cabinet listens to it every Sunday night. He realized uh, Ion was dropped. Dickie Dobbs was dropping these hints uh, last year. So Trump said, we've got to get on this. So we're going to make the uh, Space Force and plan to go to Mars, but that is a a deception. Trump is going to be getting on our vehicle, which is the Earth, transformed into a mobile something. And uh, that's the real goal of the Space Force that he's building. And Elon Musk recently had some successful flight. He is uh, being helped by the, by the aliens, but he doesn't know it. So, what are your thoughts on Musk and Space uh, on Musk and SpaceX? He says he's the richest man in the world. I thought you were the richest man in the world, Bob. I am, but I'm not in the normal registry of activity. True. I mean, you got to be a Forbes guy, you know, and register your stuff. I don't pay taxes or anything, but yeah. I do keep the, I do keep the economy going. It's yeah. my money that fed everybody the, um, whatever they got last spring, 800 bucks. I don't remember what we gave people. And the new money, the $2,000 per person is coming from me. Damn, Damn Stu, dude. thoughts on Musk, SpaceX. Well, Musk wants access to Dickie Dobbs. 
and Dickie Dobbs will not respond to him. So he's floundering around trying to get some purpose in his own space program, but it's all a sub-project of what we're doing without him really knowing or not understanding anyways. So what you're learning tonight is you are from the Andromeda galaxy. All humans are from there. I personally am not from the Andromeda galaxy. I'm from the Alpha Centauri galaxy. So I'm a bit different. That's another reason the aliens want to meet with me. I'm the only guy here not a human from Andromeda. Mm. Uh, do you think Dick Dobbs is in your head? Who's that directed at? I don't know. I saw that. I didn't know. Uh, she, who, she um, was. No, uh, nothing is in your head. There is the inner kingdom, the interior landscape, but there's also an outer landscape. And then the middle, middle landscape, middle kingdom, the interplay of those three is our being. So uh, if something is in our head, it's also in the outer kingdom as well as the middle kingdom. Well, so what we're talking about that we might as well break down inner, outer, and middle kingdom. Say we, might again? As well. we might as well break it down the inner, outer, and middle. Yeah, that's so, the way Ion describes our reality here. There's three kingdoms. Uh, okay, so. you, we have access to other realms and other worlds, uh, but this applies to our, maybe the chemical body, the actual facts of the chemical body. There are three kingdoms. Science doesn't use those categories. Probably you could take the chemistry of your body and the anatomical parts and it would align with the three kingdoms if you knew what you were doing, which Dick Dobbs does. Uh, flight, now Sky Goddess was, why she, the reason she's called Sky Goddess, she was a she flight, was a flight attendant. attendant, right? Yeah. yeah. To you, Dick. Um, yes, that's what she wants to be. She wants to be on that vehicle. Now, what's really interesting is um, no, yeah, Christmas 83, correct. A anyways, on the cover, uh, some... they have... Hold on, Did, are you, uh, my thing cut off. Are you asking about the Milky Way? Is that what you're talking about right now? Someone asked about, because I guess that's public knowledge now, about the Milky Way t rushing towards colliding with Andromeda. Yes, because the Milky Way is a product of humans in the fallen state, and we're moving out of the fallen state to make ourselves able to survive in the Andromeda galaxy, uh, the Milky Way is melting away. You will hear about this on tomorrow's show. I'll be playing uh, Dickie Dobbs talking about it. Um, the Milky Way is being affected by our super sugar, which is in all our products. The insulinose is the name Carolyn gave to it. So your sense of um, light years and proportion science tells you about distance among the galaxies is not accurate. For example, there's an area north of Hawaii here in the Pacific Ocean that when you go down, dive down into the water of that part of the Pacific Ocean, you go into an area that's bigger than what the Hubble telescope shows you. It's bigger than outer space and it's part of our earth. So our earth is not round and limited by spherical boundaries. There's multi-dimensional situations going on here on the planet. There's even flat parts. So the flat earthers are just as correct as the spherical earthers. And now we find out that it's actually a space vehicle that will move and go into the sun. So these statements are uh, ideas you never would hear from anybody else. There's variations of it on, in science fiction, but we are consistent and build on what we've said over the last 31,000 hours of recorded information over the last nine, 10, 11 years. Yeah. That's what, that's what made Jack smart. He started listening to it. <laughs> And I started reading McLuhan. Got the, I mean, I would say that <clears throat> I better close out with this. I'm get, it's getting late, right? Um, it's eleven forty. I think we've been on for like four hours. Well, actually, we've been off. We have been on for three hours. Three hours and thirty minutes. So we started at eight fifteen. So we've been on for three hours and twenty five yeah. minutes. All right. So I'm gonna leave with this, but I think you get you you. This is a this is a this. What is planet lockdown? Somebody just asked that. Uh, that's what we're witnessing now. Um, Ion says that um, 
I caused this COVID virus. And it's uh, called Bob, uh, the Lockdown Bob Rule is the technical turn on a chart I made in 1995 after processing Croker, who we heard earlier, and William Irwin Thompson, Marsh McLuhan, and LaRouche. I came up with a synthesis of this information in 1995, and it ends with Lockdown Bob Rule. Lockdown Bob Rule took place, started in uh, March, February, March, after my 98th birthday. And what it means is a breakthrough in energy and technologies that get rid of the oil world. It leads into better health products, which are all available to people, except for the energy. That's not ready yet for people to have. But this lockdown is good news. On top of that, uh, apparently I'm the dark soul. What's the dark soul? Dark soul is the human, well, someone who looks human, that's going to free all humans on this planet who came from the Andromeda galaxy and fell into this dimension. I am going to free them from the uh, tyranny of the angels. The angels don't like humans. They want to sit on the right hand of God. But God put humans there. So the oh. angels are determined to get rid of us. And I'm the guy who's going to protect humans. So I'm the dark soul, but that's from the angel's perspective, not from human's perspective. I'm a very helpful person. Got it. All right. Well, look, hey, Bob. Lies. Uh, huh? Lies. There's no such thing as lies. Now, here's a good definition for a lie. It's a truth that hasn't happened yet. Say what? The definition of so a somebody lie. Somebody said New World Order, Mark of the Beast. No, no, that's what the White House is bringing in. And Trump is trying to protect you from the beast that's coming in by aligning with us. We are the alternative to the beast. So right. I'm telling you All important right. stuff that's pretty hard to believe. But if you knew me, uh, you'd be impressed. No, for sure. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I, think we, I think we can end this... Uh... No, it's, let's not end it. That's I'm getting, it. I'm getting good sleepy. Stuff. It's eleven forty-two. It's, I got it's my whole family's over here. I gotta I gotta get back to that, Bob. So this, and I, this is it. This what is what I'm too telling much. you is this what is, Jack this, told me not to tell you. And it took like four shows. Now we're telling you. Yeah, I so may never be allowed back on. Yeah, no, you're always allowed. But I want to. I don't want to. We can't. I'm not a light people. bearer. I'm not a light bearer. <clears throat> I'm not a Luciferian. I'm an Alpha Centurion. A bit different. Proximum. You guys are confusing me. We had Proximum her going. Centurion. She was getting love and, and order in her mind. And I just blew it. <laughs> well, that's the way the tech body works. I'm part of the tech body. Praise Bob. Thanks, Jack. Proxima Satori. Tell us more. Do you believe in fallen angels? Of course. Uh, they're, most of the uh, people in the White House are fallen angels. Up against the aliens. There's all kinds of battles happening on the secret level. Don't leave, she says. <laughs> See, Jack, what you you want me to stay on, Jack? You go play with your friends. <laughs> I got to need my phone. <laughs> well, oh, okay. I think we got to save information. We got to let things materialize and save things for the next time. I think it's, there's so much information. It's just like social media. You get new information, you know, every second. I think we've, I think we've, uh, we've hit that point where we got to let people digest this. And then we Let come me say back. this, Jack. All right, go ahead. Uh, he asked if I did believe in Yahweh. Uh, no, but Yahweh believes in me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the hidden jewels of God? You're looking at them. Yes, the love hearts are coming up. Some people like this kind of talk, Jack. No, you do. And it's good. I'm just sleepy. I'm getting, I'm getting a little... Uh... It's a, it's You've a, had enough. Okay. No, well, so blacks, okay. Great. I'll answer that. So, what was that? Answer the last question. The blacks are the real Jews. Um, the real Jews are uh, spiritual. They are the people who are not. They're not limited to physical, chemical body descriptions. Many blacks are real Jews, but it's not limited to the blacks. Mm, it's not limited. Yeah, it's not limited to. Yes, yeah, I think. And I mean, that's what, that's what we, that's, we hear certain things of the black Jews and all that stuff, but it's not limited to, that's not the, we don't hear the whole situation yeah, the of real, it. The real Jews, the Bible's written for the people who are not, who are the real Jews, who we're going to find out uh, 
whether you're one or not, is whether you ascend over the next uh, couple of years. All right. We were enslaved. No, that's too particular. Uh, everybody is subject to those descriptions there. I am solity. You're, you're starting to throw your knowledge. We know a lot more than you. Deuteronomy and speaks about us. We're still very friendly. Hey, look. So, Bob, once again, this is the greatest show on earth. And then we hit record numbers today of the amount of people that we've had staying on the show. I really? think this is really one of the, I think this is one of our, we haven't been on here in a long time, but these are record numbers, man. And, and Bob, as I always say to you, man, I'm super thankful for your knowledge and you being you, Dickie Dobbs, I'm super thankful for you for staying on and, and joining this, this, this entire show. And like I said, we can't feed people too much. We got to spoon feed them. And we've been on here for three and a half hours. So, so, Mr. Close. Solity, come back, get some more information in two weeks. Two weeks, we'll be back on here. One crease, I appreciate you, man. No doubt, man. I appreciate you. We, you know, it, this is a very, it's, we're in a very cynical, crazy situation right now where we have to. I do want to give this knowledge, but I also don't want to fucking overfeed people. And Ion, <laughs> Dickie Dobbs. <laughs> 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 all right, all right one, time, one time for your mind. So, at the end of the day, I just want to say once again, Everybody out there, man, continue to live in an attitude of gratitude. Um, be thankful for every situation that you're in, no matter, despite if it's negative, positive, it's all perspective. And you can always find a way to have an attitude of gratitude, to be happy, to be thankful for family. Like I'm supremely thankful I'm here with my family. Um, so everybody here, man, continue to stay on that positive energy. Bob, thank you for coming and sharing your knowledge. Thank you for having me. No problem, and make sure you guys tune in in two weeks. We out. This is Step Back with Jack, Bob, and Dickie. Yeah. Yee! Yeah. Yee! <laughs> That's what you do in Hawaii. All right, yeah, cool. Cool. All right, Bob, thanks a lot, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right.